Come if you use the wrong mic. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Trash Taste. I'm your host for today, Gant, and joining me once again are the boys. Oh, Jesus God. Christ. Sorry. <laughs> God it. damn it, we Joey. It. We had it. We had the intro. We had the perfect take, which was the only take we've ever done today. Uh, you know. Outtakes on patreon.com slash trash taste, of course. Damn, shout that shit out early. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, right? Dude, spill half of this. Oh my yeah. fucking, guys, I thought we were professionals. We've, we've been doing Dude, this. The, but the hay fever season's fucking We've kicking. been doing this for almost like two years now. We should we should be on this, man. We should be on it's this. Fucking hell. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's got a vine boom sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, yeah, I've, I've been just, hay fever's been kicking my ass this season. Really? Yeah, all of a sudden, I hate it. Just, yeah. And especially like now, when you're sniffling on a train and you just see like all these like, Hey yo, nah, dude, bro, this boy sick or there's some there's some Japanese guys have like these n the, these most aggressive gravelly coughs, dude. They yeah. Just oh come yeah, out yeah. Of nowhere. I don't like, know how they have coughs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, you hear that every so like, always. I, I don't know uh, how exactly they do like, that. Especially volume. in COVID, <laughs> in, yeah. in like deep in COVID season as well, you're just like you're on high fucking alert, yeah. man. I'm like one of those guards in Metal Gear Solid, and like, like the fucking the fucking <laughs> alert <laughs> pops up, and I'm just like. Oh, <laughs> like I actually saw uh, at my local bookstore, they, they were selling these pins during the pandemic, like yeah. in the middle of the pandemic that just said like during a hay fever season, it, yep. it was a pin that just said, don't worry, I have hay fever. <laughs> <laughs> and so like people would like, if they were sniffling on the train, you just like show off the badge and be like, I don't have COVID guys, it's but what, just hay but fever. But what if you had COVID and you bore that anyway, yeah. just to be like, guys, it's hay trust fever. Trust me, trust yeah. me. Like, what if you had both? Yeah, like, cause I remember, cause, um, I also had like a little bit of hay fever, but also I remember one week I just got like a cough or something. Mm. And getting a cough during the pandemic time is, is like the mm. worst, right? Cause normally, normally it feels bad to cough in public anyway, but like you're, you're like, when you have like just, it's just like a dry cough, especially mm. you have to like, just, you're so conscious about it, right? Yeah. About like how often you're coughing. And it just makes the cough, like when you're thinking about it, it just makes the cough 10 times worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, especially on like public transport, you just, I, I, I remember like normally, normally going, going to my old place, it would be stressful if I needed to take a shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're like holding yeah. it in, I was like holding in this like this fucking cough and like fucking like spacing this cough out that I had for like a good 40 minutes or however long that journey was. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone around me like noticed it, but I was like, I, I don't know. I was just, I was fucking sweating from like how much I was trying to hold in this. Oh, cough. I, thought, I thought I thought you were like holding in the cough because you just, didn't want to like shit yourself in the process. Just right? like, get the cough like, out. <laughs> just just do it. I'm just gonna be like I'm gonna do it. Who who cares? What are they gonna do? Like it's not like a zombie apocalypse where if you've been bitten they're gonna kill you. Have you ever coughed and shit at the same time? No. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're not talking about shitting yet. Yet, we're yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll yeah. leave it for the. Wait, do you have a story? Do you have a story, Joe? <laughs> no, <laughs> just curious. <laughs> what? what? I don't know. Just you've never done that. Of course, I've done it. Okay. What do you mean? I've never done that. I don't, I don't have a don't, story don't around say, it. Of course, I've done it. Like, like I have also. We've all uh, done it. Yeah. We haven't all done that. I have <laughs> never done that, unfortunately, Joey. Yeah, um, sorry. So, so, sorry, sorry, I can't. I'm sorry, man. I, I wish it's, we could a, do that. it's a it's a sensation. Okay, so, so we are you on the toilet or? Yeah, of course I'm on the toilet. Oh. Okay, that doesn't count. Oh, yeah, that that doesn't, that, count. That doesn't yeah, count. That's what yeah. I mean. Like, I don't oh. mean like I, I'm I'm not asking you to be like, have you shat yourself before? Like yeah, in yeah. public? Like I think we've already I shat myself. We've talked toilet, about that before. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, no, just like on the toilet, and you just like it's not coming out, and then you use the power of the cough to like exert your body. <laughs> So you, get hemorrhoids. you know what, let's change the subject. Sure this, this is how you get hemorrhoids, I'm not sure. Like, mm. I, th I think the only thing that comes close to that isn't like shitting yourself, but like it's it's when you go back to the gym for the first time in ages, you have like ab day or something. Mm. And like the day after your entire body aches, and like the one time you sneeze, it just like puts your entire I, body into like pain mode. It's it's like, like, ah! I, I literally did this like two weeks ago. I did, yeah. I did ab day for the first time in months. Yeah. And yeah. Not uh, not one day. It was like five days afterwards. It right. Oh really? Yeah. I why was, why was it laggy? I did, no no no. It's in like for the next five days. Oh, it like hurt in a row. So oh, yeah. Right, I see. I see. Because then you went hard. I, I I just went too hard, man. I just went too hard. I don't know. What can I say? Update. Well, you know. Yeah. Talking about seasons though, like can Japan chill with its changing of seasons? <laughs> um, I, I I don't know. Like it. 
last week it felt like winter. It, fe- it felt like it was coming on the like tail mm. little winter. It was like warming up a little bit. Yeah, and I think we had. <laughs> two days of spring, like spring weather. And I remember yeah. like going out yesterday or the day before in this jacket hot. and I was sweating my ass off yeah. already. I, and I just like, Japan, I've just noticed it just, it doesn't have a transition period. You just wake up one day and it's a new season. And, and they like, say Japan has four seasons. <laughs> what a lot of shit. It's such a lie. Japan has two seasons. Yeah. It's hot, it, it it's hot or cold. It is two. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's winter and summer. That's all yeah. they have. It's 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 like different stages of cold and then just different stages of hot. There's no <laughs> warm. There's there's no like warm period. You get like the two warm days. period is maybe like in the evening when like the sun's just gone down and mm-hmm. like the 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 residue of like the concrete heat is like escaping. That's yeah. when it's like okay, that's kind of pleasant. But then immediately afterwards, it's just like oh, now it's cold as shit because you're in a t-shirt like an idiot. <laughs> I always forget how hot it is until the summer comes and then I'm like oh yeah, this is this is hell. Yeah, I think it's like trauma for me. Yeah, I like I like I like forget about it. And yeah, I, I'm like what summer what? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm winter game, bro. I'm wearing a I'm wearing a coat. Yeah. and I forget that for half the year in Japan, you just can't wear more than one t-shirt. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Unless you're a Japanese person and who can, can wear, wear a full like, suit and yeah, an overcoat. You, yeah, and it'd be like, oh, it's a little a little dab of sweat right here. Oh, what what temperature is in the office? Can we have thirty degrees Celsius, please? What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know how I walk around in the summer and just see like business people <sighs> in full on suits. Carry, like running along in their briefcase and I'm here dying in my t-shirts and shorts. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sweater. I'm a big sweater boy. I am. I am. I sweat well. like a motherfucker. I am. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, like I'm the complete opposite of Sydney because she doesn't sweat enough when it comes to heat. Like I, I'd like, mm, I, yeah. we're, we're deep in summer and like feel her forehead. And it's just like, there's, there's zero, there's zero perspiration. Yeah, Aki's exactly the same. I'm <laughs> like, that's, that's how you get heat stroke. Yeah. Like. <laughs> And My body's working. Yeah. And yeah he, if you sweat a lot, that's healthy. Yeah. Technically. It's waterway, it? It? But like, it's just- Waterway, get yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean- uh, <laughs> It's my waist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's like, it's a copium. Like it's, it's, it's healthy, it's healthy because like, I. I, I feel like the tiniest bit of heat and my, my mm. armpits especially just start just, just start perspirating and there's right. no way like and like there's no way you don't that doesn't ruin anything you fucking wear unfortunately <laughs> so I just have to like be worried in the summer even if I'm not even if even if I'm like underneath air conditioning I still sweat sometimes for me it's weird what? I don't sweat through my armpits as much if for me it's all in the face. Which is horrible because you can't hide that shit. You're literally like that meme of that that guy. I don't know. He's like on the radio. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, <laughs> fuck, fuck. I'm like that Key and Peele gif where it's just like yeah. ripping yeah. wet, yeah. but okay. like the rest of my body is okay. I hate it. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's why we're from we're from England, right? I mean, do you do you feel like being British has conditioned you to like cold weather, or do you feel like you've gotten used to like other climates? I don't now think that's- it's the temperature. It's more so the sun. I think we're, yeah. we're, I'm allergic to the sun. That's, I don't is like that because you're white? Yeah, no, very white, very white, very white indeed. But actually. like, you know, but I, I would understand because you know, you guys have like that lack of sun, right? In the UK, yeah. but like in Australia, we have like an overdose of sun. So I'm like, yeah. I, I'm like also traumatized by too much sun yeah. as well. Because in Japan, it's like, you know, sometimes the sun works and then sometimes it works overtime. I, know? I still think the summer was worse in the UK. Than it was in Japan, because we don't How have a, we don't have AC. Oh yeah, so it's like it's like three four weeks of like, at least the last time I was there, mm. yeah, it was like three four weeks of just uncomfortable sweating, and I can't do anything. Mm. Yeah, like mm. at least in Japan, I'm I can game all day in a comfortable AC yeah. climate room, right? Mm. It's not yeah. yeah okay when I go outside it sucks I, I sweat but like I take that over having a be in my bedroom sweating and being able to do nothing. That's yeah. true, that's like true. Like it's it's horrible. Mm. Like you get one of those fans that blows air, but I feel like that's literally like a copium like machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't do anything. You're just, just moving blow, the yeah. air around. It's just blowing the hot <laughs> air into my face. Actually, I, I actually like the fan. Like sometimes like I, prefer- I think that's a Southeast Asian thing. I think it is. I think it is. People like they love fans. They're like, they, I, I swear. They're just like fans <laughs> all the time. So to me, you're like, you, you admit defeat if you are putting on the AC, right? That that means you are more weak than the, the weather. Why is the fan any different? I don't know, like the fan, like I like the feeling of like just hot, like not exactly cold air. Did you say you're a fan? Fuck, <laughs> fuck off, Joe, fuck off. Just I don't know. stand under the AC. Because like to me, the AC, it just feels like, how can I put this? It feels like artificial air. I get it. I, I, can, I, I do <laughs> does, that, does that make sense? No, I understand that the get, AC uh, air is like not one you want to be like, breathing in. I don't know yeah. why, it feels weird. Cause it, I, I feel the same way about like heaters. 
right? Where if you mm. if you have if there's a difference in having like a warm room and having a room that's been warmed up by a heater, right? Because it feels ten times more stuffy for some reason. Oh yeah. Um, like I, I I don't like the feeling of just the artificial heat as opposed to just being in a country or in a temperature that is comfortable, mm. like naturally outside. Same thing with AC for me. With AC, if it if you get if you have a room that's cooled with AC, it just feels I don't know, like the air, how can I describe this? It feels like, it feels sterile. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? No, it, I don't know it, what it you feels, mean. It feels sterile. Problem, it, yeah. it is first world problems. But like, I agree, I agree. Like it just, like I breathe it in, it's just unnaturally dry. Sometimes mm. like my, my asthma, like my, my, my lungs feel the dry air way more with AC air than uh, right. than than with like just cold air in general. I don't know. It's 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 completely something that is just a me issue. But I mu- that's why I much prefer having a fan as opposed to having the AC. Mm. Right? Did I ever tell you about why my apartment smelled like <clears throat> shit for like the first two months? Your current apartment? Yeah. Why? No. Um, well, yeah, the, well, it <laughs> like, lit- the AC. like literal shit or like literal is shit because the okay. AC. Yeah. So, I, you know, I moved into this apartment building yeah. and I like I. Something just kept smelling weird. Mm. I couldn't put my finger on it, right? And I'm mm-hmm. like wondering, the fuck is this thing? Mm. I turn the AC off, right? Yeah. It's still coming in. This, my apartment still smells like shit. Mm. This is a brand brand new. I just got this place. Why does it smell like shit? It's not me. I'm I'm definitely flushing. <laughs> Looks down, I'm covered in shit. I'm I'm, I'm I fart, but like it's not that kind. Of, it's like a lingering. Like yeah, no matter yeah, where yeah, I yeah. am, I, I'm 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 getting this right. So I, I I go to my balcony, right, and there's like bird shit, and I'm like, well, it can't be that because I clean it. And and it and it still smells of shit. Mm. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Why does it smell of shit? Turns out that there was this one place where these birds were shitting mm-hmm. that was like the intake fan was right here, and all the birds were just shitting right <laughs> next to the intake. <laughs> and I couldn't see it because it's like it's like right next, like there's this much gap between the roof and the box they're shitting yeah, on. Yeah, right. it can, it's literal perfect size for one pigeon to fit in. Yeah, and they loved loved shitting there. I don't know why they loved it. Maybe because they, they felt like the roof was close. It was so nice. So you basically were huffing in bush. I literally yeah. for two months was just huffing in. And I'm pretty sure that like pigeon poop is like one of the poops you don't want to be breathing in. I, I think any poop. I don't want to breathe in any <laughs> poop to be honest. I said like, I said, I think they have like one of the more dirty yeah. Uh, poops out there, I believe. Uh, I don't know if it's correct. Uh, compared, let's no, say, no, compared to what? <laughs> compared if, to what? Poop? Listen, if I laid a log there, it's, <laughs> it's not going to smell. Is, as is, bad. is there a poop scale of like hygiene quality? I think so. I think it's. I think it's just like all poop, right? Surely. I, think, yeah. I remember Surely. when I was because when I googled like cleaning pigeon poop, there's a bunch of things that were like warning. Please make sure you don't accidentally touch the poop because it, it, it's like. Filled with like disgusting parasites and stuff. When isn't it filled with disgusting germs? I don't know. I play with mine all the time, and it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I could have been just a generic warning. Anyway, yeah. so I, I cleaned it, and then I was like, "Great, this is amazing. It's all fixed. My apartment yeah. doesn't smell of shit." Two days later, I start smelling shit again. They just kept coming back. Mm. So, <laughs> fuck coming. Um, so um, <laughs> I then had to install like those spikes. On it. Oh yeah. yeah. To get rid of it. And finally, now my apartment doesn't smell of shit unless I leave the door open and take a shit. Then it does smell of shit. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna ask how you've sorted the problem. Cause like my apartment is a my balcony is like a joke. It's like half yeah. reflective now. I've put reflective stuff everywhere and it doesn't stop them. They yeah, because I, I I noticed that because uh, in in my house and in, in my home in Thailand is like on the outskirts of the city, so it's more next like nature the nature side of things. And I noticed the spikes do fucking nothing, man. The the spikes the spikes is a great place for birds to start a nest. So Wait, like really, <laughs> yeah. these are like comically large spikes. Okay, okay, okay. I literally don't get any birds on my balcony. You're so lucky. How, how does all. that work? I don't know. How, how do pigeons decide? This is the building that I'm gonna fuck up. Maybe <laughs> one pigeon is like, "Oi, <laughs> check it out!" Yeah, because sometimes we get come like, on, come on. Sometimes we get like that one fucking pigeon that's hanging out outside the toilet yeah. of this office, and I can fucking hear it because I don't know why. Like, it's like it's here and in Thailand as well. Where the, the first thing I hear when I wake up is just these birds going at each other. Yeah. Like it's, it's 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 not even that, right? It's not even pigeons. Sometimes it's just like sometimes it's I I, I swear it's just like, like the fucking battle. ghetto. Yeah. Like it's the fucking ghetto of the birds, right? And like I can just hear like, oh, oh, mate, what what are you doing here? What are you doing here, mate? <laughs> oh, bro, uh, bro, bro, what are you doing? And I'm just pap, like, pap. <laughs> <laughs> every fucking morning. I don't know what it is. Um, and we 
Well, so we installed spikes to try and stop these birds from like hanging out outside, like stop them loitering. You know? <laughs> stop yeah. the use from loitering outside I, 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 I of our see window. These spikes you were using. Oh, it's just like the plastic spikes. It's just like it's just like that. Oh, maybe just right? plastic, and they just didn't do anything. I don't know, but like we thought, okay, we're gonna we're gonna install them to stop the birds like hanging out here every morning. Mm. Uh, th it did the entire fucking opposite because now they they like found out that the spikes are great for propping up a nest there. So they just <laughs> they just built a nest there. Really? So we we literally helped them settle down. At that point, you just got to give them credit. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's just that's just impressive. <laughs> so big brain. <laughs> Um. So yeah, unfortunately, I rather, rather the birds though, because like in Australia, we I would wake up to just like possums fucking on our roof. <laughs> what does that sound like? It just sounds. It's it's just like a lot of like rattling like this, and a lot of like <laughs> at like at like empty. two in the morning. I'm like, oh my god, please stop. That sounds pretty good. No, it's not. <laughs> How does that sound good? Do they make a mess? I hope not. <laughs> Well, if you if you hope not, that means you don't know, right? So that must mean they probably don't make it. I mean, the mess is like half the problem. It's the fact that I can't get to sleep because of these possums. I, I, yeah. I'd rather have trouble sleeping than have to clean this shit up every like two months. Yeah, I just, I, it's awful. Like they shit on my IKEA furniture as well. It's like your oh, because you got furniture out on your right. balcony as well. So wherever I put like the reflective stuff down, mm. they just move, and then I put like the reflective stuff right above. What is the reflective stuff? It's like a like what, CDs. What's those um uh, the the kaleidoscopes? No, what are they called? Kaleidoscope. That's it. Sorry, kaleidoscope. Yeah. The kaleidoscopes like kind of patterns mm. that reflect, mm -hmm. and uh, oh. it just scares them off. Yeah. But sometimes it doesn't. But some and then other times they just like it's like they're edging. They'll like find a spot and they'll like have one foot on and they'll just start shitting off of it. And I'm like, how am I supposed to predict this? Oh. This is insane. <laughs> that was a different, very different edging to what yeah. I thought you were but no, they, they were like, <laughs> standing on the edge, right? <laughs> I was like, the they pigeons, were, edging, the pigeons are doing what? They're probably edging they're as well. Like, uh, 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 <laughs> 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 they're, probably, they're probably doing that as well. <laughs> Direct eye contact. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh. <laughs> It's awful, it's awful. And they're like, they, they, they oh, it's, I can't, it's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, because do you ever do you ever have to deal like with like annoying wildlife in the UK? No, I feel like the do you most guys have any wildlife in the UK. I feel like okay, the the most annoying thing for me in the UK is I don't know if you have it in Wales, uh, but in the city in Brighton at least, or at least when I was living in London as well, foxes. The sound that they make sometimes at night just mm. is like the mm. like is the worst screech I've ever heard you in guys my have life. Foxes? We have, we yeah, do have yeah. foxes. It's like, oh, wow. the, yeah. it's like the deadliest animal we have. Yeah, the fucking pussies though. Yeah, because like yeah. you, make, you make like eye contact with them. They run, they're already like down the road. Like, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. Legging it down a mile. Well, yeah, I used to live above uh, like a bunch of restaurants. So mm -hmm. always saw foxes, but they yeah. never made noise. They never made noise? No, no actually they, they never make noise if they're in the vicinity of like Guys or humans, yeah. but like for some, you, I would sometimes hear them just like screeching off in like the background, and they literally sound like I, I don't know, like a kid being assaulted or something, right? <laughs> because I remember the first time Sydney like moved to England, she heard this noise and she was about to phone the police. I was like, no, Sydney, that that's just a fox, because it just sounds like at least. Ah! <laughs> Like you just hear that in the background, right? And I'm just like, the first time I heard it, I was like, what is that noise? And At like, least that's what they tell you. Like, <laughs> it's the foxes. It's the foxes. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> and it's just the door with like plastic gloves on. Yeah, it's the foxes. It's the foxes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. know. We only had ants. We had ants. Ants. Yeah, we that's had ants. We, ants that would get into the house. They're, just, they're pretty good ants, are. They're really good at getting into your house. Yeah. Okay, but they're like, British ants are tiny though. Like fucking. Can they even yeah, be called like, ants? But when, yeah. when there's a lot of them. Yeah, but like right. that's the problem with it. That's, you it's not you just a single ant. Yeah, you want the rest of it. Ants don't travel solo. They're not like fucking wolves. They're not like- You don't see a single ant in your house and you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> they're normally like, they're very kind there ants. They, they have a nice line that directs you to exactly where they came from. They're really, really considerate in that sense. But they'd get into like the bread bin and stuff and they'd get into like- Yeah, the yeah. Like, the sh like the sugar containers yeah, they're, they're and stuff. Really we good we at have that a lot. They're yeah. so good at finding yeah. it. Like Sneaky you think fox. you've like sealed that bread box up like tight. I can't find where the snacks are hidden in my house sometimes. Yeah, my so mom, I have I, to follow the trail. My, my parents would hide them, but the ants would always find them. They'd always, they'd always lead <laughs> really? me to I, I'd never really had such a big ant problem in the UK. It was more when I was in Thailand. Because, Might be like, where you live. You yeah, know? yeah. Cause like when I was, when, whenever I'm in Thailand, if you have like a piece of food out or you drop like a tiny bit of crumb or something, mm. there's like a timer starts, right? Before you, you have that oh, time, right. the timer starts before you can clean it up. Otherwise the ants are gonna clean it up for oh, you. And then yeah. you're just gonna have a line of ants just marching through no your way. home. Mm. Yeah. 
And like the thing about tie ants is that they're the fr- they're pretty fucking big as well. I'd rather mm. them be big though, easier to kill. No, 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 okay, you no, yeah, okay, no. It's like a super villain. You know when you step on an ant, yeah, and it just doesn't die, and you're yeah. like, what? Is this how like the villains feel in movies when their their like attack Ant-Man. doesn't work? <laughs> what do you mean my attack fails? <laughs> But like in in the UK, like ants are just a slight annoyance because what the fuck can they do to you, right? They just what do you mean? they can like eat your food, like make it like yeah, slight annoyance, a slight, a slight annoyance. <laughs> That's very big annoyance, right? Like like they don't bite you or anything. Mm. Like some, well, some... I do. I'd rather them bite me than take my food. <laughs> really? Yeah. Sure. Have you ever been bitten by an ant? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll say the same well, thing once you get well, bitten by not, one. Not, not like the fucking, what's that guy called on YouTube? Coyote Peterson or whatever. Not those kind of ants where he's like, he's like, well, my hand has swollen to 19 times the original size. I can scarcely breathe, no, even but if uh, it, this is uh, mildly painful. Even if it's something like, you know, even if it's not like toxic or like super painful, it's that is that is more of an annoyance than yeah. the ants no, eating the food. Uh, no, if it was a mild pain, I'd rather that than have to like. But what if it's like a lot of mild pains? Cause it's a lot, <laughs> a lot of ants. A lot, a lot of a pain. lot of mild pain. A lot of mild pain. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't, what's because that, you're not going to get. You, can you give me an example of a lot of mild pain? Well, because you know there is a. <laughs> can you give me another example? <laughs> because you're not going to. Because when an ant <laughs> bites you, that just invites the other ants to also attack. What's yeah. going on? Where I'm going to give them a second chance. Like, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you're like, oh, that hurt. Another, uh, another, please. Again. And yes. One again. more time. <laughs> please. Put them on my nipples, please. Bite me again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to deal with any annoying pests in Australia? I, I, I that guess is, like, that is like the entry requirement. When, yeah, you, yeah, when yeah. you get in the border, they're like, "Yo, oh, mate, do you mind if a koala bites on your toe, mate? <laughs> no, <Nah>, what? <Yeah. laughs> I don't even think I've ever seen a koala in the wild. Dude, I want to see a koala. And they're extremely rare in the wild <sighs> because they're so hidden. But like uh, my house, we used to have these like wasps that flew around all the mm. time. Um, Fuck, how'd you get rid of wasps? You, like- you don't. <laughs> Like I, the last time I went home, I remember I was like, my dad was like, you know, son, come and join me for a beer on the on the balcony. It's a nice mm-hmm. stand. I'm like, yeah, sure. I walk out and there's like 20 wasps just yeah. flying around. Cause I actually and I was have- like, uh, father, what? There are a lot of wasps flying around your face right now. And he's like, yeah, it's all right. They won't sting you. I was like, okay. <laughs> Why do wasps exist? Like, like, do they do anything good for anyone? No. <laughs> they are the di- they are the dickheads of the internet. Well, well, the, like, the, the, not like, the internet. The internet. About so many creatures, though. But like, a, so a lot of creatures don't actively try to like be dickheads and sting you. And like, the thing is, at least nature. Are you judging an animal's worth based on how annoying it is to people? Kind of, kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, fair enough. Then, like, right. like, what 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 do, what do wasps do for nature? Because you know, like bees, they make honey, they pollinize <laughs> flowers, and you know what? At least nature had the decency to nerf bees. Yeah. You know, no, they they get one shot. One shot. That, that's like that's like their nuclear option, man. This that's like their fight for the how, life. This is how super villains are born. It starts with wasp scum. What's the next step, huh? Like is I would be people I would, under six foot. Is that the next? Is that I the would next? be happy. I would be happy. If What's I, the point of people under six foot? They can't reach the shells I design. I, <laughs> I would be. I would gladly be racist towards wasps. Then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's an out of context clip in the making. I would gladly be racist. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, yeah, Gant, Gant's the kind of guy where if he got a death note, the first thing he'd write is wasp. wasp. <laughs> just every, just every wasp. Everything that annoys me. Every, like is, a is one like by a, one, one by one by name. Every single wasp. Is there like a syntax error for like the death note? It comes back. It's yeah. like sorry, did not did not spell correctly. Yeah, I, sh- I should preface. I actually have a phobia of bees and wasps. I don't know if I've ever talked you have about told this. Okay. You got stung in the eye as a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, okay, yeah, I would. Yeah. I, I would have that. Yeah, but the sure. thing is, yeah. the thing is, like, I've I've grown like, even though I, like I'm fucking deadly scared of them, I still in my heart, I still I still understand why bees, you know, why bees are a thing. I think I think you know after after years of conditioning, like bumblebees, they look they look kind of cute. What? They, they look yeah. like like furry and big, and they yeah. pollinize. And chonky. They, yeah, they're chonky. <laughs> oh, give them a hug. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you taken any steps towards trying to conquer your fear of bees? Um, <laughs> maybe we bees? could do like a fear factor esque kind of thing where we have How, a. What, okay. what would the steps be though? Why don't we play Dark Souls music, right? Like da 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 da, and then we bring up and gone. Your punishment for the trash taste after dark is that you have to put your head in a box of bees. <laughs> yeah. What? What? <laughs> what is this fear factor? Yeah, let's do it. Would you do that? 
If you told, <laughs> if you told me, if, if okay, here's the thing, right? I'm an idiot. If yeah. some guy came on, he's probably he's always Australian because yeah. on every single wildlife show where, they, where there's a wildlife expert, yeah. the fuck is always Australian. Of course, yeah. he'll come on and be like, "Oh yeah, they won't sting you." And then the ten seconds later, you're like, "Ah, ah, ah!" And you're like, "Oh, you're fine though. You're yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna die. Don't worry." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It changes to, "Oh, yeah. you won't die." Yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, no. If 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 a if some wildlife expert told me that it's safe to do it, I'd yeah. do it. What, stick your head in the box, please? Oh, no, yeah. I would that's, not do it. You can pay me to do that. That's a big fucking step. I mean, like, I, I, put, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if How this... much for you to put your hand in a box of bees? How much for how will, long? How much are you willing to pay me? One minute. <laughs> One minute? <laughs> One minute. Uh, what is the minimum price you'd do it for? I don't Ten. know. Ten. I, I would gladly do it for like five. Five? Yeah, five, five Gs. Five Gs, yeah, 10 G for me. I don't know, it would have to be more than 10 for me. Yeah. I don't know, that, maybe. That, or that maybe, or, or maybe, or maybe just for content. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh yeah. That's yeah. sweet ad revenue, baby. That's sweet ad revenue. Like, <laughs> if I'm just chilling in my living room and you can, come on, how much do you put your hand in the box of bees? I'll be like, oh, five grand. And then they do it. But if it's for content, I'd probably do it for free. I mean, here's the thing, right? Because before, like when I was a kid, I couldn't even how look at like, this? I couldn't even look at videos of bees. Like I'd, I'd see a bee and I'd literally scream and like run inside and like shut the so door. So if oh, we damn. got yeah. a box, box of bees, you would do it for content. How do we get it? How do they get a box of bees? Maybe. How do they do the audience and well, well, okay. How do they do this on shows? How do they get a box of bees? But like now what, like I go, I go through phases <laughs> where like, maybe like out of like a sense of like morbid curiosity, I like look at, I look at bee cleaning or like bee videos on YouTube, right? Mm. And just seeing like these beekeepers just fucking like scooping up like his pile of yeah. bees yeah. and just them casually being like, oh, you know, they're, they're very friendly today. I've only been stung three times. I'm like, you've been stung three times and that's it, that's it. I, I'd be fucking, uh, one time is more than more than enough for me. I wonder how many times would you get stung if your hand was in that box for a minute with like a hundred bees? I think if you just stay still, then nothing. probably yeah. nothing. But if, you, but if you're fucking doing this, this, this yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is uh, I I ignorant wolf. Uh, what is it? Uh, wolf ignorance. Uh, yeah, wolf ignorance. I think. Yeah, but like, yeah, okay, I'm sure it would be okay some. bees, <laughs> bees maybe because uh, bees maybe wasps get the fuck out. of I'm coming here with a flamethrower. Bees, you, bees, bees. If you if you come here with wasps, because <laughs> like I like I, think, oh, I feel how like how about we put your hand in a box with a feral hyena gun? What do you reckon for a minute? <laughs> for one minute. <laughs> oh, a minute. Oh, uh, win. <laughs> for content. For content. For content. For content. <laughs> I know. It's like I've also like been glad. Have you ever seen a hornet as well? Yeah. Mm. Those are fucking like terrifying. I think I've seen- Oh, we, we have the killer hornets here. Yeah, you have the killer hornets. Yeah, those, yeah. those, I don't want to fuck with those. No. Those yeah. are like scary. Those are scary. Yeah, especially like, I remember seeing the video of just like hornet, like <laughs> it sounds like a fucking, it sounds like a fucking anime fight or something. It's like hornets versus bees. And Dude, it's that just, video is <laughs> epic. I, Where it, the bees like surround it. Yeah, the bees surround it. And like, it's it's not it's not even like a war, it's a massacre, right? Cause the hornet, like oh. one hornet take, takes down like a fucking a hundred bees or something. And it's, it's I feel no, like- No, no, the bees fuck up the hornet. Oh really? really? Yeah. We've seen different videos then. Cause I've seen- it's two like, different fights. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know which bee it is, but there's videos where like, there is a way that they kill the hornet yeah. by basically they all just compact themselves on the hornet. Mm. Right. And they roll around and they do it like with like such like energy mm. that it actually just burns the hornet alive. What, like through friction? Yeah, it like kills the hornet by being so hot. Holy shit. That's, that's fucking metal. Japanese, Japanese honeybees. Honey they, <laughs> they kill the Japanese, like they, they surround it and it, they compact like a ball and they roll and like keep like suffocating it and what burning it. What the fuck? It's so badass. What? That is it's fucking so badass. Cool. I'm sure there'll be a clip on the screen right now. Yeah. It's it's fucking cool. It's so cool. Like nature but sometimes like, is that like- That just sounds like yeah. a shonen like power. <laughs> like. I just like love it that these bees figured this out. Yeah. They're like, fuck it. Just throw How ourselves at How did the bees this. figure that out? I don't know, man. Fucking hell. Like, you, you ever heard of friction? <laughs> We could use that. <laughs> yeah, because like the only video I've seen is where like, it's it's just these bees, like this hive of bees just fucking chilling, making honey. And then these fucking group of 10 hornets or something just come on and start like fucking biting their heads yeah. off, massacre this entire fuck. hive and then fuck off. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> where was that in B movie? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, like fucking nature can be fucking metal sometimes. Cause I remember seeing this video, not about bees, but I think it was like ants and yeah. scientists were just were like, were they, they were, 
studying fire ants because fire ants have a way when they're moving in a group or have they they, they have how how can I how can I word this when they're what what do you call it, like a group of ants a oh, a colony like yeah a colony of ants the way they act and behave sometimes can behave like a liquid and sometimes can behave like a solid this is cert yes yeah, certain ants i think can do not all of yeah, them yeah not all of them i, th really? I think it was, it was yeah. fire ants they can like cross water by yeah bunching together yeah and basically becoming kind of like a pseudo solid yeah uh, like a, and then they like can kind of like yeah so they can have the like these ants can have as a colony have properties of a liquid or a solid depending on the situation That's so dope. and they were like scientists was literally studying them yeah. to try and apply this to can like real do. life metals and real life real life applications and right, i'm just right, like right. That, that sounds so fucking can metal. humans become liquid if we try hard <laughs> i'm solid joey now soon i'll be <laughs> yeah. liquid joey <laughs> i am i am solid joey but no yeah that's yeah that's the weird nature videos I've seen every now and again. I've, uh, did you guys watch a lot of nature videos? Oh yeah, I fucking love nature documentaries. I like, think, yeah, I think. I, I grew up watching like, cause they used to just do like constant reruns of like every like David Attenborough documentary. Mm. So I like, suppose in fucking uh, Australia. Oh yeah, we, loads, love, right? we love that shit. Yeah. Go outside and you'll see your local kangaroo fighting. <laughs> Come on there. Now, that, now the only kangaroo clip was the one where the guy punches the kangaroo in the face. Oh, that was a good That point. one was all over Australian news for like two months. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Where he's like saving what's his that, dog. What's that about? What's that like? Uh, he was, uh, the kangaroo was like- The hit, kangaroo had the, the dog. yeah, he had his dog in like yeah. a, in a grip, in like a vice grip. How does like, that happen? I don't know. The, the clip literally starts with the guy in his truck like just calling out to the dog being like, oh no, fucking Terry, or whatever the fuck his name was. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> and he jumps out and like the camera pans over and this red kangaroo, like fucking, you know, beefy yeah. motherfucker standing like two meters tall, just has the dog in like a grip like this. Yeah. And the dog's just like, help me. <laughs> help. It, it has the most like help face that yeah. I've ever seen. And he squares up. Mm-hmm. And the kangaroo's fucking squaring up. And, and that's really <laughs> dangerous because like, you know, one kick from this red kangaroo, like yeah. in the chest, that dude is dead. Yeah. hundred like percent. Right. Um, but no, this guy's like the biggest mega chat on the planet, which just goes whack and just socks <laughs> him in the face. And the kangaroo's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and looks around, he's like, nah, he just jumps away. And, the, and he saves the dog. But like, it, I think as well, like the, the kangaroo felt threatened by the dog, I think. So yeah. like the kangaroo mm. also tried to like, kick the dog as well. So right. the dog could have died too. What, what do kangaroos eat? What do they eat? Grass. Just, uh, are they herbivores? Yeah. Oh. Man, but they're, they're also very- Pretty fucking strong for herbivores. But they're also extremely territorial as well. Uh, yeah. so. is, is the is the picture I've seen of like jacked kangaroos, is that Photoshop or is that like real? I could never tell if it, I've seen it I in memes. Some of them are real and I'm sure some of them are like, <laughs> overdone, but like red kangaroos, which are like the biggest breed of kangaroos, like they right. like on average stand like two meters tall. Oh, I, I awesome. mean, Australia is like the most interesting wildlife. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's because it was like a, it was pangea on its own for like hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah. So all these weird animals. It was like one of the first spawned. ones to like break off. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's had hundreds of thousands of years, but that's also why it's also like super delicate and why yeah. when they introduced foreign pests, mm. it like completely fucked up. Australia, yeah, like they have a rabbit problem. You know about? Do you know about this? Yeah, yeah, but they can't kill the rabbits. Do you know why? Why? Because people don't want them to kill the rabbits. But the rabbits are literally killing everything. Everyone's like, "Oh, the bunnies are so <laughs> cute, though." And farmers are like, "Ah, uh. yeah, like they, they like eat everything, and there's nothing left for like the you know the because." Rabbits are like insane. They're like so good at like taking everything yeah. and mm. fucking. I mean, like hence, the British. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they literally, well, I think it was brought over by a British guy. Of course it was. Because it a guy wanted to hunt rabbits in Australia. In Australia. So he brought over some rabbits. I could be incorrect on this. Mm. And obviously, rabbits are like very, very good at expanding. Yeah. And so, yeah, they have, they have the travel problem. And they've been trying to, they had a, they were going to start culling them. Mm hmm and getting rid of them. Mm. But obviously trying to pass a, 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 a thing saying, hey, we're gonna murder a million plus rabbits. Is that cool with everyone? A lot of people are like, no, rabbits are so cute. We can't get rid of rabbits. <laughs> but it's like, but it's like, but our wildlife is, but but rabbits are cute. <laughs> Brings up a really interesting question of like, yeah. is it, you know, obviously- Just, just because it's cute. <sighs> at, at which point do you count something as a pest that needs 
control. Well, I think when it's actively when, when it's like actively it's, fucking up the na- the natural world. Yeah, that's right? the problem is that like the the delicate ecosystem that Australia has because it's so susceptible to yeah uh, um, pests and mm. stuff. I think the rabbit would just like went crazy, and so many of the the natural. Um, species, what does it fuck up? What do, what do the rabbits fuck up? Well, they eat everything. They take everything. They because they eat all the the food that yeah, the rabbit, natural like animals are supposed right, to. Right. Rabbits are, are, are only like, as far, from what I understand, like they are only limited by how much food there is. <coughs> yeah. They, they can breed and make as many of themselves as they need to. It's yeah. just, is there enough food available? Mm. And they're really good at getting it as well. So like the, what are those fucking tiny rats with big ears and a tail? in Australia. Oh, bilbies. Yeah, like those things eat shit compared to the rabbits. The mm-hmm. rabbits like absolutely cream them and everything. <laughs> and also rabbits, like rabbits eat their own babies. Do they? Yeah. G- Google Do it. they actually? Do they? Yeah, yeah. that's metal as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like rabbits don't give a fuck. Ra- like everyone's like, oh, rabbits are so cute. <laughs> rabbits eat their fucking babies, bro. Well, are you gonna call something cute when it's like devouring its firstborn child? I don't it's, know. Like, it's like, oh, yeah. if I eat I mean, this one, I can just make another yeah. one. I mean, I, I, I... Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but like, I guess- But the I, fact that that's even an option is like yeah. nuts. I, I mean, I, let's be honest, humans are, I've, let's not let's pretend like humans haven't done it, all right? Yeah. We're not great. We're not, if, if we judge the whole species by one or two rogue rabbits, then maybe. So wait, wait, I'd, 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 okay. The, the one thing that doesn't make sense to me, I guess, okay. is okay, rabbits are fucking thriving in Australia. They're like yeah. beating the shit out of Australian wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. Why, is it not a, why is it not a problem in the UK? Well, because you guys don't have enough native animals. Maybe? Well, rabbit, rabbits are, as far as I understand, I think they're native to the UK. Yeah. So the whole like ecosystem in the UK had been created right. with rabbits being in it for a very long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I'm correct, can you Google this? Foxes, yeah. We yeah foxes. We, but you the need, foxes eat the rabbits. Yeah, you right? need to have the balance, yeah. right? And Australia- I'm, I'm just I'm just finding it funny that rabbits can survive fucking Australia, where you look at a spider wrong and you're fucking well, dead. I mean, <laughs> and then like well, in the UK, what the, in the UK foxes are like the biggest pussies of the animal well, kingdom. Australia, uh, correct- Australia has a lot of species that are like it's like the you know you're playing on the the easy server. You know if it's like what? a lot of these. Even though we know Australia is like one of these super yeah. scary animals with these snakes and stuff, mm. they have a lot of species of animals that can only survive in Australia. Yeah. yeah, And it's very delicate. Well, like koalas, for example, right, only right. eat eucalyptus and a specific type of eucalyptus that's grown in only in Australia na- natively. Yeah. So that's why you don't see koalas in the wildlife out- outside anywhere else because they literally can't survive. Yeah. Like in any other continent, like the animal probably wouldn't have evolved to just eat one type of plant that is very not popular. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you would have to adapt, go on, sorry. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. But damn. in Australia, but they're in like, Australia, it's our territory yeah, now, like, baby. If yeah. you introduce a species, there's a problem why, why these, obviously people didn't understand this in like the 1900s. Yeah. We didn't fucking know what was going on. They were like, just bring my pets over. I'm sure it'll be fine. Why, <laughs> what I don't understand is the, the argument of why we shouldn't be getting rid of these rabbits. It's like, oh, they're so cute though. So, Meanwhile, yeah. when the Australian government was like, eat the kangaroos right now. No one was like, but they're so cute. But this, okay, this is also a common thing with cats. Yeah. Cats are more often a very big pest in places. Mm-hmm. People don't want to get rid of cats because people have pets. Yeah. They mm-hmm. have cats in there. If the government is like, hey, you at home, are you okay with us killing all of this animal? And you look down and you see that animal staring at you that you've loved and yeah. named and fed. And you know what I mean? It's really hard. And I, so what as, you're saying is less people need to keep rabbits as pets. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. What, what, I, I understand to both. What, he's, what he's saying is rabbits have way too good PR. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That that is their literally PR it. is so, it's too fucking they're like, good. They're like the McDonald's of, like, <laughs> yeah. of animals. They've, they've got it like down, right? You can tell them that McDonald's puts all the shit in their food. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. People are gonna eat it. It's like, I'm, I understand both sides and I, I don't, I, 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 I empathize with both. I yeah. empathize with these poor, like these people who care about the natural wildlife who are like, we need to keep it yeah, the yeah. way it was supposed to be. Yeah. I also understand why that person with 10 rabbits at home might not want to have all of the rabbit population culled. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. both, right? Also, another fun fact, <laughs> while we're on fun facts about animals. Go on. Did you know, <laughs> I love this. This I, 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 was, I was watching an episode of QI the other day and they talked yeah. about this. Do you know why 
for the longest time, they never gave the giant tortoise a genome, like an official genome name. Why? Do you What's know this genome? One? Like they could, they, you know how every name, every animal has a Greek name. Oh, okay. Right? Right. Do you know why they never gave the giant to- like turtle no. a, a name? No. <laughs> we, they knew about this animal for a very long time. Yeah. Right. Problem was- These are the motherfuckers that can live like 300 years. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Problem was, people couldn't stop eating them. They never ever made it back. Oh, I did hear about yeah. this. Yeah, because what? every time, every time they tried to ship the tortoise- People would just eat them. Yeah, it would never survive the journey because they were too delicious. Yeah, they would- <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so the, 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 apparently through the, we, cause we don't eat it anymore, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Cause there's none left there in endangered species now, so right? In the writing, right? Here's the, it is literally like the perfect storm of unfortunate for the giant tortoise. Yeah. So <laughs> apparently in the, in the, in all of the documents left about the giant tortoise, <laughs> it tastes better than any meat. Yeah, it Damn. tastes better than lamb. It tastes better than beef. It tastes better than pork. Everyone, like almost unanimously, agreed who tried this meat agreed that it tasted better than all of them. Right. <laughs> Damn, I want to try it. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Another unfortunate uh, evolutional uh, part of the giant tortoise is that it also. Oh, this is just so sad. It evolved so that it could store up to like one gallon or one liter of water. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Inside of its body, almost perfectly like a sack. So when you would eat it as a human, there was almost perfectly this one liter capsule. So of basically, water. it came with a drink. It came with a with a. It's like a meal. Imagine yeah. it. You just had this. You know, you're, you're living it's at just the time. a survival pack. Yeah, you're living, <laughs> at the end of the day, you're living at the time where beer was drank more than water yeah. because yeah, yeah. water was hard more to often get. not poisonous. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you, it was it was hard to get a hold of in in certain places. So you had this animal that tasted amazing, that was this perfect kind of like, it could store very easily. It was very easy to eat. Yeah. Or a lot of the meat was edible in it as well. And it had yeah. this one gallon sack of water that you could just drink. So <laughs> sailors would, when they would take them back, they were like, well, fuck, we're gonna eat it. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. because not only was it delicious and amazing, they also had a free gallon of water they could drink. So it never made it Wait, back. Wait, so does it have a genome now? It did. It did after after many many years. It finally got one, but <laughs> it's it, food. But it never it never survived the journey back to like the UK or something. Yeah, wow. So they could be never classified. Never yeah, just, yeah. Oh, that's, just, <laughs> that's just so good. It's really fucked up, but that's hilarious. That's, that's really like, funny. Can you imagine it? You're just on the boat and you're like, fuck. I just want to. I, 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 I could. I just want to imagine the scientists <laughs> yeah. waiting. And just be like, they're, like, they're, like, they're like, all right, I want to see this animal so like, I can yeah, figure yeah. it out. They're, they're like, like, what do you like, mean you ate it? They're like, they're on the port back. They're like, we're going to bring back 10. We're going to eat nine. We're going to let one go back. All right. We all agree. One can go back. We only need one yeah. to name it. Right. And then it's, it's like one week left on the ship, and they're like, fuck, dude. Remember that flambéed giant tortoise we had, dude? Ooh. That's looking kind of delicious right now. I'm getting real parched. <laughs> <laughs> just makes just, me wonder how good must have it, must it have tasted? Yeah, they, it must yeah. have been amazing. They just they yeah. just come back to port. They're like, we all right, we brought ten back. We got one. How many shells we got left? One, two. <laughs> Fuck, we ate them all. It's like, we're right, next, fuck. next trip, guys. Next trip. Next trip. We're going this time. Yeah. Well, we're going to bring time. 11. Yeah. <laughs> the way they wrote about it was that yeah. it was so delicious that, yeah. like, it it sounded like they genuinely just like couldn't resist <laughs> eating it. Yeah. But like, imagine it's that delicious. We were like, boys, you fancy just going for like a quick voyage to the 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 <laughs> islands to go and get some more more giant tortoises, <laughs> and they just keep eating it every time. <laughs> like, I'd like to think it was that good. They, yeah. they, they would go back to go and yeah. get yeah. more. Me and the boys yeah. on the way to go <laughs> get giant tortoises. Like, oh, oh, dude. Yeah, it's, oh. A, it's an endangered oh. species now, right? right? Yeah, it's, it's an endangered species now, right? Uh, it's like, <laughs> oh, we I thought it was just endangered. Yeah, we, we fucked up. Okay, okay. <laughs> But, so it's kind but, of like the dodo as well, right? Yeah. But like, I would rather as, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want us to extinct any animal, right? Yeah. But I would rather as extinct an animal because it's too damn delicious. <laughs> not that it's, that we wanted its horn or something. That feels yeah. so wasteful. If we're like, dude, we made a, an amazing stew out of the giant tortoise, 
part of me is like, that's fucked up. Okay. But at least you use it. At which point do you think like natural selection just should just take its course? <laughs> right, right, right. Well, okay, think, I'm just, think, just, think I'm just saying. Are you saying like, it's your fault for being born this uh, delicious? I, I like, don't know, I no, don't know. No, I mean, no, but, but, he's got a point, but he's got like, a point. <laughs> if, if this, if, why the fuck? This animal just was so unfortunate that it evolved to be the perfect like, like food you, for humans to eat. You fucked up in some way in evolution by being super delicious, right? And I'm having sorry. a free sack of clean I'm water. Sorry, you, you kind of are, you kind of are, right? They just didn't survive, oh, obviously. Again, every part of the tortoise was also edible. Yeah. The marrow apparently was also delicious in soups and stuff. It was every single part of this fucker was delicious. This tortoise had evolved somehow to be so goddamn delicious. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't get it. And I'm angry that I'm never gonna get to try yeah, it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm angry that I'm never gonna try it now as well. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm more angry that it's extinct because I can't try it now. <laughs> <laughs> listen, can we just like, feel like, listen, I want to eat it. Like, listen, can, listen, can, listen, can it be like we the care about, rib or something? Yeah, just come listen, back we, for a month? Like, we come care on. about nature or something, all that bullshit. But you know, <laughs> the, the delicious animal. We, I mean, we've talked about eating possible dinosaurs and yeah. all the dinosaurs we might not possibly be able to eat, you know? Like where's the Jurassic Park episode where they bring back a extinct animal so they can just like serve it as a delicacy, right? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we brought like the signs like we brought oh. back the T Rex yeah. because we heard flambang this shit. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. good. That's what Jurassic Park would actually be. It yeah. wouldn't be a it would be a restaurant. It wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a theme park. Yeah, it wouldn't be a theme park. It would be like, like come on, come on. If you bring back an extinct animal, there's gonna be that one fucker who's like <laughs> Me, oh, so I'm gonna they, be that. So how they yeah. taste? How do they taste? Come yeah. on, there's gonna there's definitely gonna be of a course. dinosaur restaurant of somewhere course. in the world. Of course. You know, I mean, it's the, you know, the turtle, it's unfortunate that it was perfectly evolved to be- Yeah. <laughs> By to me. be eaten. I mean, the writing was on the wall. That's I mean, there, there, are, there are some animals where I'm just like, without humans, you'd be fucking, you'd be on your last legs. I mean- <laughs> We <laughs> saved you. You should I mean, be okay. grateful, okay. Snow Leopard. Like, how did, how did, like, how did pandas become China's like national animal, right? Because is, isn't it like pandas, isn't it like they, they have don't to fuck? They do not fuck. Yeah, they just they refuse don't. to fucking have offspring and fuck. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> if if you have an animal that just like does anything that is possibly could to willingly not fucking breed, at like at which point do you just like maybe they just don't want us like, exist they don't anymore? Exist. <laughs> <laughs> what well, the man is just like we just want to die. <laughs> yeah, can, could you stop? Right? Here's, the, right? here's the problem with us as humans, when I think it comes to us with extinct animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The amount of shits we give about saving an animal is inherently tied to how cute it is. That is that is such a, I, <laughs> I, I, I refuse to believe any other explanation. Yeah. Do you, if, we, if you told us, oh, we have to save this one species of uh, flounder, people would be like, oh, we, don't, I don't know, we can live without a flounder. But it's right? delicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, like, yeah oh, there's, uh, there's two things people care about. Is it delicious? And is and it does, cute? And is it cute? Right, like yeah. if, if a panda wasn't as cute as it is, no. would we care? Probably not as much. Let's be, we are so fucking biased. All of the animals we want to save are either cool as fuck or cute as fuck. That is true. Think about it. Think of an animal off the top of the head that, that people are trying to help, like you see campaigns about and stuff that where the animal isn't cute or cool. I mean, I don't know how, like I know, like the most endangered species I know are like pandas. Cute. Um, tigers. Yeah. Name extinct animals tigers. that are going extinct. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, it's just any animal with good PR, right? That's it. Yeah. But, but, that, but to get good PR, you need to be cute, right? Yeah. <laughs> cute or like badass. Like if yeah. a species of snake snake was dying out, yeah, those snake people online would. Like, oh, snake no. people. Snake people. <laughs> you know, you know, you know who I'm talking about. But most people wouldn't give a shit. Let's be yeah. honest. Like yeah. you're not going to see the like the fundraisers about it. I'm I'm just being honest. Like that's how we are. We're, we're so fucking biased as humans. Yeah, we mean, love to be like, oh yeah, save all the animals except the ugly ones. Fuck them. They can die. Yeah. Unless <laughs> unless they're like unless they're like exceptionally ugly, like yeah. the blobfish, yeah. where it just becomes a meme. Then yeah. it's like, well, yeah, 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 now yeah. we got to save now it because look at this marble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's fugly. Yeah. And then now it's now it's, now just it's great. like it's so ugly. It's cute. Yeah. Almost. Well, yeah. yeah. Now now I'm fucking cheering for it because it's the fucking underdog. Now yeah. look at him. No no one's gonna cheer for that. He's, he's doing his that. best. Yeah. If we're like, oh, we need to sh save the the tooth fish, and it's just a fish that is just like literally razor blades and like no eyes or yeah, face. Yeah. You're like, well, no one gives a fuck if it dies. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I'm sure the scientists who spend their life researching these stuff will be yeah. very sad, but the, the general population doesn't care. Yeah, and let's not pretend like we do. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't. Let's no, we, we don't. don't. We don't. We, we, we only don't. care when it's already happened. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I guess so. I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, like, animals have been animals have been going extinct for the entire history of nature itself. I'm not right? saying we should just let them go extinct. No, no, no. Like, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying like I, 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 I feel like there should be like I feel like we should try to preserve nature as much as we can. Of, yeah, course. of course. Um, but I, you know, yeah, well, I, I, like, we're not, not going to be like weak mindset. <laughs> See, uh, what are we like? What are we the board meeting of the yeah. fucking Laura? Yeah. It's like, what is this? Like, <laughs> I think we should uh, get rid of all the plants. We need more water parks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck them. Fuck the plants. I mean, like, if, if humans have had like a direct effect on making this animal as things, I think yeah, we should we should take responsibility. Yeah. We should be like, okay, yeah, we kind of fucked up their entire environment, their entire habitat. Yeah. Let's 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 try not to do that again, unless it's delicious, of course. You think rabbits have this this meeting? <laughs> <laughs> should we uh, stop fucking? I don't seem like we're taking over a lot of things. No, no, no. No. Enjoying it too much. <laughs> consume, consume, <laughs> fuck, consume. This episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is like buying tickets to a Taylor Swift concert, but only being able to watch the opening act. That's I want to see Taylor. As you know, a lot of content on Netflix is region locked. Luckily, we get all the anime, but I'm missing a lot of good old British TV shows. But thanks to ExpressVPN, that's a problem of the past. Because ExpressVPN lets you change your online location to wherever you want. Control where you want Netflix or other streaming websites to think you're located, and and boom, all of those libraries will be open to you like that. I actually use ExpressVPN quite often. Uh, just one tap on the app. It's, it's very really easy. easy. Yeah, it's I very, mean, very easy. I, I don't know what else there is to say. It's easy. You can pick any country you want. And if you you know want to change your region for whatever reason, be it content or if you're shopping, buying tickets for stuff, you know, you sometimes get cheaper flights. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Be smart, stop paying full prices for stream services and only getting a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash trash taste. That's expressvpn.com slash trash taste to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Back to the episode. You ever, have you ever had, had to like clear out a wasp infest, uh, infestation or whatever? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> what, what, what's the process around that? Uh, <laughs> broom and running shoes. Yeah, well, in, in, in the UK, I think you're supposed to call a specialist. Yeah. Uh, but I think a lot of people just take matters into their own hands. <laughs> yeah, we just take matters into our own hands. Yeah, because like I, I know um, I've had to see Sydney's dad deal with like a wasp nest, a wasp nest being like just just newly formed, and mm. even even that was just like I am standing behind it's like six foot of bulletproof glass while I'm watching you do this because <laughs> well, I'm how not. How do they deal with it? Did huh? You shoot it. <laughs> Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> That's the most American fucking. <laughs> Not on my property! <laughs> Buddy, get the shotgun! <laughs> No, he, so, he, he, well, had a, he had a broom. He had a broom as like, well. But he, he had a shotgun just in case. There is no good reason to own an M16 unless there's a wasp. I, I have seen. I'm going to shoot them down one at a time. I have seen like a video on YouTube of like Americans, and I, I think they were Texans getting risks, getting rid of wasps' nests with a shotgun. And it's, it went exactly how you think it went. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <Blah>! <laughs> Wasps immediately come and attack. Yeah. No, it's like, is there any like fucking animals that you fucking that terrify you that you'd see and you're like, I think Australia's just conditioned me to be like, as long as it doesn't kill me, I'm not really afraid of it. There's there's no like one particular animal or bug that scares mm. me the most. But like, mm. I mean, if there's a if there's a deer or a bear in front of me, yeah, I'm gonna be scared. We've already spoke about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. have. Scared. You know, I, I, it's not so much me being scared of a lot of animals. It's just cautious. me being like creeped out or cautious about them, right? Like I'm not, I'm not scared of a cockroach, yeah. but I'm not like, ooh, yay, little cockroach. You know, I'm not. I don't love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what's okay? One bug, not scary. Okay. Like. 50 bugs together freaks me the fuck uh, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually the same. Like, I I fucking hate spiders. I mean, who, like, only yeah. a few people don't hate spiders, but mm. I actually prefer, like, the bigger the spider is, like, the more comforting it is for me because at least I can see it. It never leaves it's my view. To kill. Right. It, is, it is, it's It's like, it's- Get the shotgun. <laughs> a large <laughs> hitbox. Yeah, it literally has got like a large hitbox, right? In case I want to do something. Yeah. There's fucking small spiders that scurry about. <laughs> Those are the ones that yeah. fucking keep me up at night. And I, I don't know why, I don't know why. It's the one thing I don't miss about the UK. We had a lot of spiders in my house in Wales. Are they really? in, Are any of them poisonous though? No, no, no. Just no. like, you just don't want to see, like where they, where they go under your bed and you've like lost them. Weak mindset. <laughs> It's, it does suck when you see a spider go underneath your bed and you're like, I'm dead. No, no. the worst one is when you're sleeping and you see it on the ceiling and you yeah. blink and it's just disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, like, about the, I've had like loads of mice and rat problems in the UK. Yeah. Have I told you about that? No. 
I actually, had, I think you have. I think so. I've had r- rats in Swansea and I had mice in London. Right. What's the <laughs> difference between a mouse and a rat again? Oh, you know the difference. Rat is like Bro, a huge mouse. Rats are like, well, they're massive, dude. They're fucking disgusting. Rats are like the mega chads. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the mice are just like civilians. Mice okay. aren't that scary, but mice are so fast. Like Rats are fast. I d- m- mice move at like the fucking speed of light though. And also the thing that sucks about mice is that they can like, no gap is too small for mice. Sure. Yeah. They can fit through anything. Mm. So they would go un- under the door. Even yeah. though the, the clearance is like this, they would like squeeze underneath. They turn, it, they turn it to a liquid form. Literally, literally, <laughs> dude. I, I remember because we were, this, it was so funny because this this, uh, this maisonette in mm-hmm. London that was created, it was uh, being touted as being rat and mouse proof. That was the whole point behind the building. Oh yeah. yeah. And the landlord was extremely furious when I told him <coughs> about it. I was like, yeah, man, oh, we, got, we got mice. And he's like, what? <laughs> I bought this place specifically because I was told that it couldn't have mice. I'm like, well, we got mice, and and, and so how do you we, make a place mouse and rat? I, it's not, I, it's I not possible. Know. I don't think yeah. it's possible. Um, and so we had these uh, mice, and they always came out at night. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's normal. Yeah, I never saw them during the day. But Are they nocturnal? I don't know. It was horrible though because I'd be like in my bed watching Netflix. TV's there. Door is here, and I just see a shadow. Oh shit! In my do- in my room. Yeah, I've had that before. And I was like, what the fuck? That's so weird. We don't get mice and rats in Australia. It might be too hot. I don't know. Well, I think it's because all the snakes are fucking eating. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah true. right. <laughs> well, because right. they get like fucked by snakes yeah. and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cats and stuff. And um, yeah, I, we tried all this expensive stuff for killing them. Mm. Yeah. In the end, the, the thing that killed them the most was just- um, Mouse trap? The basic Amazon mouse trap. It would clap their cheeks. Don't, don't fix something that's not broken, right? I think I think the I think the poison killed some of them, but we ended up just needing to like clog it. But the thing mm, is, yeah. they chew through everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no matter what you clog it with, they just they 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 do they get through it. Mm. Like and in, in New York, the the rats can chew through concrete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Little by little, right? Insane. Yeah. It's insane. The the one pest that like Shawshank shit. Yeah, the one pest that like terrifies me of ever getting is termites. I've never known anyone with termites. Oh, oh we had ter- we had termites. Oh, it's not really a problem unless you have like a wood house though, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Cause like at my parents' place had like a termite infestation well, and it was scary how- because it's like, oh, the house might come. Yeah, right. Down. The, the, like it's it's the one of the few pests that if you have it in your house and under the right conditions, it could just kill you, yeah. right? Because well, you yeah, could just- wooden houses in Australia mainly, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. How'd you deal with termites? Like what's the process? Around you, getting uh, when it comes to termites, you just have to call like a specialist for that. Don't right. they just like gas the place? Pretty much. Then... They like smoke it out basically. Right. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, we had a termite. It wasn't like a massive infestation, but we were like, uh, yeah, we should probably get rid of these now because mm. if they expand, yeah, the house is going to come down. Yeah. Like, so, so fuck that. That's fucking terrible. It's That's so, so scary. It's so sick that when they do that, like when they put like gas all in the house. Yeah. I just found that so cool. Well, why? Like, why is that why? cool? It's like, wow, they just put like a tent over the house and gas it. I'm like, that's so badass. Who who thought like, we're like oh, we're going to kill these rats. Oh, we oh, got to use these uh, rat, rat poison. The guy's like, hold on. Boys, what if we gas the whole house? What if house? we nuke the house? <laughs> and I'm like, the, the first time they, that someone suggested that, someone must have been like, you're crazy. I was like, no, no, come on. What if we put a big tent, a comically large tent around the house? Someone's like, you're a genius. <laughs> Let's try it. Well, how, how else are going to get rid of like thousands of tiny insects just living in every single crevice? Yeah, they're not going to be like- <laughs> Dude, They're going to be like, well, well it's, it's either like the tent or the flamethrower. And I'm like, before we get oh. the flamethrower out, maybe we should Dude. try the tent. Maybe. I think- the one job on earth sort of somewhat related to this, not dealing with like getting rid of bugs and stuff, mm. but yeah. you know, people who clean houses after people have died. Yeah. That's yeah. like the one job I don't think I could do. Oh, it depends what how horribly mean? they die. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. cause normally, you know, when you get older, you struggle to take care of yourself. So the house gets like really like, you know, yeah. fucked. Mm. And uh, I saw one on, about Japan, it's so depressing. And it's just like- No, it happens very often in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they go in and they're just like, well, we're just gonna take all this guy's possessions and uh, trash them and stuff. It's like, oh, oh, that would break my heart, dude. Just going to someone's house trying to figure out like what their like life was like and stuff. I couldn't do it. Oh, I, I mean, I guess. I mean, like, like, oh, I don't give a like, fuck. Because bring in the trash I, truck. I, 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 thought, I, thought, money. I thought you meant people who had like been brutally murdered. Yeah, yeah, that's I, what I, I thought. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's a pretty, that's a well, pretty that, bad I mean, job. that's probably one part of it, but yeah. like, what if you're like, uh, a guy who like couldn't take care of yourself, you're like 70 and uh, you know, maybe you couldn't make it to the toilet and stuff. 
I don't know. I, I feel like I, I feel like room smells just like really shit yourself. Well, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it happens. Like it happens. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think that'd be like a fine job. I mean, <laughs> it's, <laughs> God, say I'll do it. Give me yeah. a tenner. I mean, it's not, it's not a pleasant job, but I feel like it's- would, you, would it not freak you out just knowing that like someone was there, like and living there, like a, like a week ago? That would freak me out. I think you get pretty numb to it after a while. Yeah. Though. I mean, I I, know. I, don't I feel know. like cle- cleaning out, you know, all of their stuff. You just like be like, oh, this is this is someone's legacy. You know, this is yeah, that would someone's freak me entire out. life. Why would you freak them out? I don't know. Just trying to figure out what what happened. Like, what was their life like? Maybe they wouldn't. I, I think that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you get you get like a peek into someone's. Not not saying like this is like a glorious job or something, yeah. but I I think you know if someone died peacefully of like old age or mm. something, and you're cleaning their house, I th- I think that would be like a a, a really interesting Most, way to you can like really piece together like what they're like. Piece together mo- what yeah, kind of person they are, and like I, you know, I think unfortunately in the modern era we have this peaceful ignorance that we think that. Uh, a lot of deaths are this like pleasant. He passed away with his friends and family, yeah. Yeah. especially in, like Japan and stuff. It's like no, like Tanaka San died, age nineteen, in his apartment, and his family hadn't seen him in five years, and yeah. he doesn't have any friends. And right, and he's just, just a skeleton now. And it's yeah, it's like yeah. It's, 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 it happens because yeah. the video was like following this guy that I right. watched, and he was cleaning it out. And it was just like, he was like, yep, it looks like he tried to make some food right before he passed, but he wasn't able to. And it's like, oh. Oh, you man, just heartbreaking. Man, yeah. the curry, dude. Like, we all deserve that. We all deserve just a nice. Before meal. the curry. Wait. So, how would they die then? Well, you know, if you're getting really old and you're not, you know, and you're not able to make it to the toilet and stuff, and you can barely get out of bed, and no one's there to help you, you know, it can be really fucked. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you know, one day your heart could just be like, <clears throat> I don't think so, and then just stop. You know. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there are worse ways to pass away than that. I mean, it's it's they 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 died in their home, and you know, I I think that's that would be something where a lot of people wish to pass away. I think know? I think a worse job is like the people who have to clean up after like train accidents. Yeah, you know, that would be that's, traumatic. That's, for yeah, that's that's that would that like, would suck us. Like to me, if I knew a guy died peacefully, I'm I, you know yeah. peacefully of old age in their own house. I'm like, you know what? Death is never a, a nice thing. But if there was a way that I would want to go, it would be like that. You know, just yeah. just nice and nice and peaceful in my own in the comfort yeah, of my own. You know, just like very quietly. You know, just like reflecting on that person. Like meanwhile, you know, it's like, oh, cool. This guy jumped in front of a train. I have to pick up his fucking pieces of his skull. You know, it's like I don't. I I would much <laughs> rather do the house job yeah. than the other one. I yeah, know. I know. I, I remember I stayed like a. I remember I stayed like at an Airbnb once, and uh, the guy running this Airbnb was like this uh, old Japanese guy. He was uh, still. He was like in his seventies or something, and it was like showing us, you know, giving us a tour around the house. <laughs> And it's a bit morbid actually, but um, just like just like one block away from their house was like a graveyard, right? Oh, yeah. And then, and he uh, and we had to walk through this graveyard to get to his house, right? And he uh, he pauses uh, he pauses at uh, at one of the graves and he talks about, oh, this is uh, you know my dad's here, my uh, my grand my granddad is here, um, and I'm gonna be right there. <laughs> and me and Sydney go. Uh, he's always prepared. He's prepared. Cool. Uh, that's that's that's. How'd you react to that? How, how'd you how'd you react to a like, old an old guy being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be there in a few years." I'm I'm like, "Why? Well, let's do it now." <laughs> 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 Okay, oh, out of nowhere. <laughs> but I mean, he's, he, you know, he, like, I, I can't even, like, begin to empathize what my thoughts would be like at that age. You know, mm-hmm. at, at what point do you just accept your own mortality and you just kind come, of come, 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 come to terms with it and come, yeah. come to peace with it? I right? think that's kind of badass, though, to be like, you know, just kind of facing reality and being like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to be there soon. I'm, I'm just going to enjoy life, you know, yeah. while I still have it kind of thing, you know? Yeah. He's, he's pre-ordered it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he pre-ordered his gravestone. He pre-ordered the gravestone. Pre-ordered <laughs> death. <laughs> he, he had like the space like and everything. Yeah. I was just like, oh, for, like to me as a young guy, to yeah. me as like a guy in his thirties, that's like, dude, that's, that's, uh, that's a bit morbid to me. But I mean, I don't know. I, 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 at that age, I don't know how I'd feel. Well, people in Japan like everything planned out. That's yeah, true. They, do. they yeah. like everything that's to be predictable. True. They're like, I want to know what I'm dying, so, yeah. I can, so I can figure out how many crochets I need to do. Okay, at which age would you ever consider getting life insurance? Right? Because <laughs> okay, because isn't it when you get like kids, you're supposed to. Yeah, usually. Or like writing a will, right? <laughs> right. It's 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 something you never really think about. But don't I, they say that you should write a will like in your twenties? Yeah, I've wanted. Yeah. To. I've been I've been meaning to. Yeah, like like, like we're I, at that age group where we should have. A will already. Well, okay, okay. Here's the thing. I think it's when you have something, 
you know, if you, you know, we, we're quite successful, we've done well. Yeah. And so if you have some savings that could be of great help to your family members yeah. or something, yeah. fuck the government, don't give it to them. Yeah. Make sure you're, you know who in your family who gets yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So I think if you have anything worth giving to your family that is significant, you can, you should do well at any age, you know. God forbid something happens, but yeah, you know, yeah. Could, God, God forbid, right? And to but, my sister, I give my entire body pillow collection. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Do not touch good, the bank good. money. Who I am I, give, I? Who am I giving my YouTube channel I, to? I, I do, <laughs> I, I, you're, you're, I'm literally giving away clout. Who, yeah. I, who wants the clout I, on my YouTube channel? I have already decided that I want my the reading of my will to be a comical endeavor. So I, I'm gonna add the most stupid items to my will and be extremely specific <laughs> with instructions just to just to get a good laugh from the grave. Yeah, yeah I don't know because like I don't have any brothers or sisters mm. and I would hope that I pass away after my parents. So, and I don't have any kids right now. Mm. So at, at this point, I'm just like, when 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 is there if that like awkward conversation or that awkward realization to be like, I should write a will or I should look into life insurance mm. because I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know about your parents, but uh, like, I remember like a few years ago, my parents told me that they had started writing their wills. And I'm just like, mom, dad, I don't want to think about that right now. You know, just don't tell me. I don't want to like, I, I acknowledge it, but yeah. at the same time, just, I don't want to hear about it. I mean, it, my you know? dad just used to meme his will all the time, like growing up being like, if I ever did like a good deed, my dad will be like, I'm adding that to the will. <laughs> <laughs> you get an extra item on my will. <laughs> it's like, yes! <laughs> my sister be like, what the fuck? It's like a fucking competition. It's like, yeah, yeah. Right, who, wants the, who wants the house and the will? <laughs> Who's it gonna be? Yeah, cause like I, I told the story of how like I gave uh, my dad, like my dad wanted like a, a car, car engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And he's like, son, the entire record collection that I have was to your sister, but now it's under your name now. <laughs> I was just like, yes. I'd like to think your dad doesn't even have a will. He's just making yeah, shit he's up. Making he's, it just, up. he's just saying shit as he goes along. <laughs> Probably. But yeah, I, I, I remember I read somewhere, I think it was on like a Japanese program that they recommend that you should just write a will like as soon as you're just like have awareness of like your it's life. It's pretty cheap. I think yeah. any document and then you get it witnessed, I think. Yeah. yeah. Sun, yeah, I, I don't oh, think it's know. that complicated. It's, I think it's just like going out of your way to be like, hey, I'm going to write about the moment after I've passed away and who gets my belongings. Mm. And, I'm, and you know, before you think to yourself and you're like, I don't have any belongings worth giving away to begin with. Why would I write a will? Well, my Jojo collection needs to go somewhere. Who would you give that to? Who would you give that to? Would you trust would, one of your family members right, to it? I would trust the boys with my Jojo figures. I'd like to think oh, that you'd keep on to them. Thank you, you very much. Treat them well. You De would uh, definitely not reselling that. <laughs> <laughs> you can resell it if you want. <laughs> I better get good price. It's my it's my Jojo. <laughs> Like on your deathbed, I'll be like, Hope, did you just like quickly sign yeah, this? Hopefully, hopefully my name won't be like worthless at that point. Yeah, Maybe yeah. it'll be worth something, I don't know. How do you go about like, like what is the structure of writing a will though? That's what I've always wanted to know. Like, do you I, write it like a know. novel or like a letter? Like, I think you can be- <laughs> Can you write it like a poem? I think you, know? you can be as playful as you want with it. Yeah. You ever yeah. thought about doing a video will? A video, yeah. What's up guys? Welcome to my will. <laughs> So I'm dead. <laughs> is, is that like the new YouTuber fucking yeah. <laughs> trend? We've had apology videos. Now we just have- now yeah, we just Make sure have to subscribe. Okay. Just so, kidding. So You're you, not gonna get another video after this. You've heard of, uh, I made this video five years ago and uploaded it. Yeah. 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 Get ready for, I made this video when I was alive and it's the play where I died. <laughs> I think that would be fucking cool. Yeah, I think that would be cool. Like kind of like, so if you're watching this video, I'm dead. But yeah, also yeah, yeah. the payoff might not work if like YouTube like doesn't exist in like 60 years. Or well, it's probably gonna be like age restricted yeah. and fucking <laughs> banned off YouTube. But imagine, imagine that, imagine that. Someone someone like dies of like a terminal well, cancer. No, you, can, you can play a video of a dead person on YouTube. Well, I mean, it's not you know, it's not you showing the fucking footage of you dying. I mean, the the, the <laughs> it's like the, it's like me now, age twenty. I record something. I'm like, oh, this is to be played. Yeah, yeah. Not not me. Like, bye guys, boom. Like, it's not <laughs> that. It's, it's I, like, mean, I mean, I, I mean, like the the only like closest thing I could think of was like the um, the unfortunate thing of what happened with Etika, mm. um, and that you know that would that got removed my YouTube. So I don't know, we've never had it before. So I guess we've never had like a president before of like what would well, happen. No, there's, there's, there's these YouTubers who have died and the video is still up. I think that was a special- But like, but like have, has there been a YouTuber who has recorded their no. like a goodbye video? 
post oh, like that right would, before they die. No, no, no. Like, like, like a goodbye video that would be uploaded post mortem. You know, does that does that make sense? Without okay, can I ask a morbid question? Are you asking that without the intention of then doing something very sinister? Yeah, without the like intention. like oh, like well, natural. Well, no, like no, let's no, say no, let's no, say no. they have like a terminal illness or something, and oh yes, there is. There has been. There is. Yeah, there I'm was sure a, there has okay, been. There was okay. a, a very, it's, 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 a, it's a powerful watch. Um, I don't think I could like, I don't think I have it's the hard, heart to watch it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I could watch it. A guy yeah. was vlogging uh, his um, cancer journey. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name. I, I wish I knew the name um, off by heart, but <laughs> it was, it, it's, it's, it's hard to watch because, yeah. you know, he's doing well at some points and then it's unfortunately, it, it takes a turn for the worst. Mm. Yeah. And the last few videos he uploads are very painful. He's in like the hospice and- um, Oh God. And- uh, <sighs> You know, it's really, you know, I, I think that it was very rare that we had uh, footage of watching that, but mm. yeah, he's uh, he was uploading a video and um, yeah, he, he unfortunately passes away, but all the videos are there and his mm. whole journey's there and yeah. uh, it's very inspiring. But how cool is it that, you know, at least, you know, all of that is now documented right? yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's just like out there for people to watch and yeah. be inspired by Like that's- I that's can dope. imagine that a, I think know, that's a lot badass. of people found mm. comfort with it. Um, I mean, yeah, it's 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 hard to watch. Because yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, I, don't, I don't think I could. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, uh, this is this is going this is going on a tangent, mm -hmm. right? Because we, we we are talking about terminal illnesses and stuff like right. that. Uh, like, do you? It's do you feel like you, you watching that? You know, watching something like that happen in your eyes, mm -hmm. in front of your eyes. Do you feel like with with how with with how awful that situation is? that seeing that kind of thing portrayed in media so often mm. has kind of like desensitized or desensitized you to like how awful that is in reality, just because, you know, the, you know, the cancer patient or someone dying of cancer has been like used as such an, a common writing trope in like mm. every sad mm. anime film and just like every sad plot point in general. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <sighs> I guess in, until you experience it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's someone close to you, or even you know, and yeah. with yourself, you experience it. Like, I think it's it's impossible to portray it in yeah. an authentic I way. Th I think though, just the the sole fact that you know that trope has been used so many times in the in in fiction, and mm -hmm. yet it still continues to draw emotion out of the viewer or the listener, or whatever it is. Right? Yeah. Like like people like you know. Stories about like, oh, you know, the, the main character got, is, you know, has a terminal illness slowly dying and it shows all of that. Like, yeah. first time you consume anything like that, 99% of people will like, you know, be very emotional, like, yeah. you know, cry. Yeah. But it's interesting how you could watch 10 different shows like that and you'd probably still cry on the 10th one as yeah. well, right? So I think like, even though it's been overused in fiction, I think just that is so powerful and potent enough that like, it'll just continue to like, evoke some kind of emotion let alone if you yourself experience that shit like that is like that that just adds on to it i feel yeah I, yeah I, and i'm sure you know some people be desensitized <coughs> to it sure you know yeah. but i think at the end of the day there's a reason why writers still use that trope, yeah right? I, guess, I guess for me like i went through like a weird experience where i i had seen so many stories like this that mm. there was a point where i got desensitized to the media where it was just like oh it's 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 a character dying because of a terminal illness yeah, yeah. like and 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 then I, I i unfortunately experienced um a family member passing away because uh because of something like this and mm. it was just like it definitely grounded me in a way that i never not that I never thought I would, I just like put things into perspective for me, right? Mm. And it just, I don't know, like it, it, I haven't since, since that has happened, I've like actively avoided any stories around that because mm. because it seems way more, way more real to me. So I don't know mm. how I would react to that. Mm. Like that part of the reason, for example, that I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't watch Clan Ad, right? Mm. Or oh, I couldn't finish Clan Ad, uh, was because at the time I was watching it, it just felt like it just felt like cry Surreal, porn, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just felt like cry porn, where like I was like so disconnected, disconnected with with what was happening on screen because I'm just like you know this is this is this is this is key just trying trying to make me cry, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's trying to make me cry. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I had a point. I just like I I don't know if I would react differently to watching those types of media now that I have grown up and I have more experience about, more experience about, you know, the real events that 
I guess, influence stories like this. Mm. Um, and if I would still feel the same way or if I would still be desensitized because it is a fictional story that, uh, that has been told many, many, many times. I think when it gets to that point though, it just revolves around how well written like that's those true. stories and characters. That's true. Right? Because Some- there are so many stories where they use that trope, yeah. but you're just like, okay, I'm, I know I'm supposed to feel sad for this character right now, but the writing is so mediocre that it hasn't <sighs> given me enough emotional storage for me to care about this character. That's true, I, that's I, true. I think it's like impossible to, to replicate the feeling of going through it in real life, just because like, no matter how good the writing is, because you know, you're, you're talking about something that, with, let's say it's a movie, it yeah. tries to do it in two hours. Mm. Yeah. What would take essentially like a lifetime to build up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like the reason it's so crippling in real life and, and it hurts so much is because if it's like your friend and they, it happens at 20, yeah, it's like, all right, well you have 20 years of being their friend. Yeah. And now it feels like it's it's being like robbed. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's almost <laughs> impossible to portray it in a way that will give you the same emotion. I think it can give you a sense of empathy in a, in a, in a very deep way, mm. but nowhere, nowhere near can it like compare to the feeling that you might feel if you go through it, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, th- I think one of the biggest, not issues, but one of the biggest hurdles uh, between like communicating your experiences to an audience member or to a, someone mm. who hasn't experienced the same thing as you is that there is like such a massive difference between sympathy and empathy. Mm. Like there, there'll be like, there'll, there'll be people I talk to and they talk about their experiences and I can definitely sympathize with the emotion that they're feeling. But mm. there's also, a, there's also like, do you, do, you, do you guys ever feel like a connection with someone who has actually shared the same experience with you? Mm. Like like the same emotional experience with you? Then there's like, there's a connection there when you share that experience that cannot be replicated no matter how much other people would try to understand you and try to understand your feelings and everything yeah. like that. Um, there is a feeling that cannot be replicated without the same empathy. And, um, and I don't know, there's, to me, there's something special about being able to communicate that empathy through through like fictional media, right? Because mm. there there are, there are some times where I watch a film, um, and I feel something that's not just hey you should you should cry or you should feel this because this character went through that. It's wow, I really feel like an actual connection with the creator now because he's portraying an emotion that I know is impossible to depict unless you have been through that exact experience yeah and i'm trying to feel i'm I'm trying to think of when was the latest time (laughs) when was the latest time i I mean off the top of my head i i think of like evangelion right Mm. and like why why that's uh why why i have such a close emotional connection to that and it's it's like it's so weird for me with ava because i i've watched ava in several several stages of my life and the the reason it's the most important for me was because there was a point where i felt like i was going through the exact same emotions the creator was. And this is going on like a complete fucking tangent, by the way. Mm. (laughs) And yeah, I I, I guess to me, that's why going on a different tangent, going on a different tangent, that's why media is like such a big, such a big part of my life and why I'm a fucking anime YouTuber, I guess, is because I I guess that's what I search for in media, which is not just to be entertained, but like this connection with Mm. a person and a creator mm. and that's why i try to make content and uh and i don't know what uh, i don't know where to go from there but uh thank that you was for coming to my ted talk Damn, thank you for deep. coming to my ted yeah. talk wow i mean that's like i guess i guess this is where you go from when from talking about people dying from <laughs> cancer right where where'd you go from here <laughs> yeah i don't know it's like it's you know it's it's tough because like i think the one like emotion that i personally feel when it comes to like real life situations and stuff like that, it's like, it's not, it's not even like, cause you know, when you're watching like media that revolves around like a death of a character, mm-hmm. right? In, in any situation, yeah. most people think of like sadness, yeah. you know, like a depression or, you know, like some, some like rooted emotion. Yeah. But like people who have experienced, at least for me, when I experience like a, a real death that happened, like yeah. you don't, you don't feel anything. Like it's like, you, you feel empty. Yeah. And yeah. I think this feeling of emptiness is extremely difficult to portray in fiction. Yeah. Because it's like, how do you, how do you try to show or evoke 
an emotion that is not an emotion. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. and it's like because because mm. I remember like when when one when one of my friends from high school he he unfortunately passed away very like you know suddenly um, from from an illness. Right. Um. It, you know, I had never experienced that. Like, that was like the first time I had experienced death in a close, like a real death in a close vicinity. Yep. Um, and like, it was so weird because, you know, media and, you know, people who haven't experienced that would lead you to believe that like, you know, you go to a funeral yeah, and everyone's crying. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's like, everyone's sad. But, and I thought I was the weird one because I didn't cry at his funeral. Mm-hmm. And I was like, am I weird? Am I being desensitized? Like, yeah. you know, like I should be sad. I should be crying. I should be grieving, you know, all that kind of stuff. And not to say that I wasn't, yeah. but like, I think because I'd never experienced anything like that before, that's when I realized I was like, oh, I'm feeling empty. Yeah. Because that, because, you know, it's like, it's, it's beyond sadness. It's beyond yeah. grief. And like, it was almost like this weird thing where like, I didn't start crying about his death until I got home. That was and that's and that's when it like hit. That was the exact same experience I had with my grandma as well. Yeah. Like uh, at the funeral, I just I was just like, am I broken? Am I a broken human yeah. being? Because like, I don't. I feel nothing. Yeah. It's like I should be crying yeah. right now, right? Yeah. Like you, you hear back on like you know I was hearing back on my friend's life and yeah. like you know hearing speeches from my my classmates and whatnot, and I was yeah. just like, why am I not crying? Yeah. Am I am I weird? Yeah. And then it's like you grieve, everyone's sad. And then I went home and I, I remember like, I, I like, clo I went into my room and I, I lay on the bed and then I just broke down crying. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's what that feeling is. And it's like, I don't, I personally have never seen a piece of fiction that can properly evoke that emotion. Right. Like it's, I don't know. It's, it's weird to say like, it's, it's not like it's faking an emotion or anything like that when it comes to fiction, but it's like, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like, it's not the correct emotion, Yeah, I feel. And and I think that's just because it's just so incredibly difficult to show that real emotion, especially yeah. when it's with a bunch of characters that, you know, you didn't spend your entire fucking high school life with, right? Like- Yeah, exactly. So like, personal question. Mm. What's the most you've ever cried to like a piece of fiction at all? The most? Yeah. Probably the second half of Clannad After Story. Like the last like six episodes, I was like continue. Like I was like, like episode like, you know, 14, 15. I'm obviously not going to spoil it. Yeah. But like episode, <laughs> like around like episode 14, 15 of Clannad After yeah. Story, like something happens. Yeah. And it's like, you break down crying and you think to yourself, okay, it's all out of my system. Yeah. And then the next episode starts <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> fuck man, <laughs> why? And then it's just that. Yeah. For the rest of the episodes until right. it's over, and you're just a fucking mess. I just cried everything. There's a lot of TV show. Stuff that isn't even sad, I cry it. Like what? I don't know. Like, just Deku would be fighting in my hero name, and I'll start crying. Just, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it depends on my mood, right? I'll, yeah. Some days, yeah. I'm like a, some days I'm like a fucking rock, and it's yeah. like, mm. it could be like the worst thing on earth, and I'll be yeah. like, <laughs> it's, it's really weird because I've found myself, and I think, I, I, I think this is healthy because I've, I've found myself more easily crying towards pieces of media and fictional pieces of media oh, now dude. than I did like, uh, like five. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah five, five years ago. Anything. Yeah, and I, th I think like the the thing like th the one that broke the camel's back was like Anohana. I'm like <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I cried a lot. Out of <laughs> yeah, I, I think before Anohana, I don't think I had ever cried watching an anime. For yeah, me, I'm, I'm, for, trying, I'm trying to think For back. me, it was weird. It's like very early on when I was watching a lot of anime. Like, yeah. you know, because I, I think I first cried at Clanad. And yeah. then it was just like a chain reaction of like, yeah. and then I watched mm -hmm. Anohana and then I yeah. watched Air and then I watched all these shows that made you cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for a while I had this blank period where Probably I just- you exhausted yourself. Maybe. Yeah. And then the one, the, broke, the one that broke the camel's back for me was Makia. Angel Mark Beats, Angel oh. Beats like, made me cry. Yeah, Angel, Angel Beats, Beats made me cry, okay. but like I didn't cry. Like there were so many like sad shows that people were like crying. Like I didn't cry at the end of uh, Your Lie in April, even though a lot of people did. I didn't either. Yeah. I don't know. That and I was like, am I weird for thinking that? Am I just like overexposed to this kind of media? And then I and then I watched Makia on a fucking plane, yeah. tiny screen like this with <laughs> shitty like crying headphones. Crying in one piece. <laughs> yeah. And like crying to like three pixels. And I was like, <laughs> And then the ending to that just like destroyed me. And I was yeah. like, why is it this one? 
that made me cry after Look, all this time. It's, it's weird because before, like, I would, anytime I would cry, just cry towards something, that thing would be like really, really fucking special mm. to break down the brick wall that I am. But now, nowadays- <laughs> The stone of a man, <laughs> the obelisk known as Gantz Emotions. Exactly, but nowadays, because I cry way more easily, I don't know, it's weird. Sometimes I have like empty cries where I cry and I'm just like, it's over and then I feel nothing. Mm. It's just like, I don't know, it's weird. Oh, like, I get, I, I'm like, I cry and I feel amazing. Yeah, right. I it's just it's, do it's it. like, it's like, like yeah, a yeah. release. Yeah, like I ordered McDonald's the other day and I was like, why do they do this? I cried. You know, I, fucking I fucking cried to Demon Slayer. And I'm just like, why? why, why do I, cry <laughs> uh, I get it. 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 The moment I feel sad, I'm just like, I just get it over with. Man. I, just, I just do it. <laughs> yeah, have you ever, ever had those cries though, where it doesn't feel like you've released? Wait, yeah. you just feel shittier? Yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. edging with tears? No, not edging, but it's like, not, it's you cry it's not and then you climax with tears. No, no, there's, there's those times where, you know, you'd watch something really sad and then you just like let the emotions out. And then after your tears have subsided, you're just like, whew, all right, I'm glad that's out. You know, I yeah. feel good. Like all yeah. my emotions, all my emotional baggage is out. And then there are some times where you would start crying. And yeah. then once the tears have subsided, you're just like, man, I'm now more sad than I was before <laughs> that's I started like, crying. That's like, when I was like 15 with breakups, I'd cry and I'd feel worse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Why did she leave me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, going, going back to funerals, I, I wouldn't, like even if I wasn't, you know, cause you know, sometimes when you were like 10, you didn't really understand what was going on. Yeah. Mm. And then maybe when you get older, you're like 15, 16, and it's like, oh, it's this person that you barely ever met, but mm, you have to yeah. know because mm. you're all connected. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know them. So I wasn't like sad, but I would just get, I would just like cry because I'm like, why is everyone crying? This is so sad. Oh, Bruh. You, you <laughs> cry because everyone around yeah, you is Yeah, because if everyone else is crying around me, I'm like, fuck, well, I got to do it now. Mm. Like saying that, like Mark Zuckerberg. No, <laughs> yeah, but like I said, like, I would- This I would is feel human <laughs> emotion. I must cry now. Sad.exe. <laughs> no, like, I don't, it's something about being around people who like, when a room is filled with like sad energy, it just makes me get like that. Yeah, it depends yeah. for me, right? Because it's like, say for example, like the Demon Slayer movie, everyone yeah. was crying like fucking crazy at the end of that. And I'm looking around like, oh, oh, it's now. I, I have to cry now. <laughs> but, well, yeah. I, can't, I can't get yeah, the tears out no, right no, now. No, 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 no. Like, like, like to me, if if I, I cannot cry to a piece of media, if there's someone else in the room. Like I, there's, there's, there is a, <laughs> like, I can't like, show wait, the manly wait, tears. Wait, wait, wait. Sydney as well? Huh? Sydney as well. Especially Sydney. What? Do you know, do you know, really? do you know why? Do you know why? Because she'll be like, oh baby man, you want a little cry? No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 because, because like 10 minutes before the tears even start forming in my eyes, she's bawling her eyes out already. <laughs> she, Sydney You're is on so, cleanup duty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sydney is so emotionally receptive yeah. that like she will start crying five minutes before the sad moments happen and she'll be like in tears. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, because um, yeah, if I'm watching with Sydney, I am on emotional cleanup duty. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's, it's okay, baby, yeah. don't worry. Like I'm, I'm like, Baby, like I, I, I didn't even get my point. Like I, I, I didn't even like. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I, I guess you can't really be like, oh, baby, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard about relationships where the guy comes too fast and then, then it ruins it. What about the one who cries too <laughs> fast? Girl, girl, I can't girl. get my tears in. Yeah. She's Wait, already decided fine. it's over before I've, I've even started. <laughs> yeah, because like I remember, because. Uh, I remember because like your name, uh, I cried like a fucking baby the first time I watched your name. And it wasn't right. even because it was sad. Your name was to me, the reason it's one of my favorite anime films is because to me, it's like the perfect cinema experience where yeah. there are so many things happening on screen that there's like so many emotions um, that I just get so absorbed that my body doesn't know how to react mm. other than just crying. Some, sometimes I get emotional and I don't know what to do with it and I cry. That's like an overwhelmed cry. Yeah, right? it's like, yeah. It's like the, an the, overwhelmed the music cry. music normally does that for me. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. I fucking cry right? like an E-key. I don't know. Yeah, I don't right? know. <laughs> I, I, it's always the music. Thing. First yeah. note to Black Parade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is the music, dude. The music will make me cry like instantly, dude. Like My Hero Academia. I don't know why I tear up whenever I, I fucking hear you say run with like Jackie screaming. I'm like, yeah, yeah, why? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's like I've been programmed to like a certain tune. I'm like, it's like Pablo. Ah! Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I literally like yeah. fucking yeah. dog. And so I remember, I, I, I remember second time because uh, the first time I went by myself. Mm. Uh, Sorry, Mark Zuckerberg. By the way, watch this. <laughs> I, I know you don't really like these uh, segments. I know you can't relate to this. Sorry. So the first time I went by myself, um, and the second time I was like, Sydney, you got to see this film. It's fucking fucking amazing film. Mm. But come see it with me. And I remember it was the moment just before Rad Wimps start playing, and that that is yeah. that is my that is the moment why I start crying. Yeah. And I remember, I remember. I remember 
I remember sitting in this film and uh, it was the second time I was getting as emotional. I was get, getting as into it. I was like getting absorbed. And I'm like, it's coming. It's coming. Radwimps are about to play. Yeah. And then like, on like a minute before like they start playing, I just hear, <laughs> like next to me, I'm like, oh god! And it like it just it just took me out. And I'm like, and it, it, it of course it's Sydney bawling her eyes out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's why that's why as much as I love Sydney, some, if I'm watching a sad thing, if I want to have an emotional release, I cannot watch it with her it's in like, the shut room. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I, I'm like Sydney, can you stop being emotional for one second? Did you watch his new movie? Is uh, weathering? Oh, weathering with you? you? Yeah, weathering, weathering with you. With you? Yeah. Yes, I did yeah. watch that. Did one. you cry? I did not cry at that. Did one. you cry at um? Who's the other director? Who's good? Mamre Hosoda. Mamre Hosoda. Yeah. What's his uh, Bell? I thought Bell was okay. <gasps> it was. It did you was, say it was mid? Okay, his. <laughs> I, I, I watched it by the way. You oh, I, it? I haven't seen it yet. What What did you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you watch it in cinemas? No. Okay, I feel like that's a movie you have to experience in cinemas because everyone everyone I've talked to who has seen Bell, right? They've talked about how it's like a fucking incredible cinema experience with like the sound and the mm, music mm. and like you, there there are definitely scenes in Bell where I'm like I I get that. This it feels like especially with like the musical scenes, mm. the musical numbers. It feels like these scenes were made to be to be experienced in a theater mm. with like with like the surround sound mm. and everything. Um, in terms of the plots and everything else, it was not his greatest movie, in my opinion. Was mm. it one of those movies though that it was like crybait? Yeah. So it's like so it was like the yeah because because that's the I thing. I felt like, like it didn't earn it. Right, but that's the thing is like it's like mm. sometimes it's so weird with fiction that is like cr obvious crybait. Yeah, where it's like sometimes it's like. Yes, I will buy into the crybait yeah, very yeah. happily. Thank you very much. Yeah, and then yeah. there are other times where it's like, okay, you don't have to push this in my face this much. Like I'll cry when I want to cry yeah. or yeah. I can cry. They, yeah. they have a digital world in the show and, yeah. I, I, and a movie, sorry. And I, I just I just wasn't invested in this world. I just didn't think it was like, I, yeah. I couldn't see it being mm. a thing or yeah. why people would care. Mm. I, I get it because it was like, we're just going to make an online world where you can be anything except you can't and your avatar's chosen for you. And also yeah. there seems to be like a class system where uh, some people are more important than others in this world. And why, it's does like, that, why does that just sound like some wars? And I was like, I was like this is it, just it like- It is exactly some wars. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, how do you know it's a whole set of memorial movie? He, he's made the same movie again yeah. with, uh, with Beauty and the Beast this time. Oh my God. Yeah, it was uh, Beauty and the Beast. That's yeah, what I was yeah. also like, what's right. this? And, uh, it was, I, I wasn't, I was okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, it was okay. <laughs> I, I agree with you. You know what uh, I watched in the cinema? Uh -huh. What? The Batman. Oh, how was it? Very, very good. Really? Have you watched Ooh. it yet? No, no, no is yet. it three hours? Yes. Okay. And I loved it. How was Robert Pattinson in it? Delightful, just a treat. Yeah. What a great guy. What a, what a great guy. <laughs> what a, what a, what a, what a bloke. Uh, okay. I, like saw, I saw a meme the other day. It was like, it was like uh, 2010. It was like women like fawning over Rob Pattinson. Yeah. It was like 2020 men fawning over Robert Pattinson. <laughs> yeah. It's so true, dude. Hell yeah. It's good. It's a good, good movie. Good it's a good him. movie. Is it a good movie or is it a good Batman movie? Uh, I think it's not that much of a Batman movie. Really? It's, because it's, I, I, I'd give it an 8.5. Because I'm like I'm like one of the, <clears throat> I'm like one of the weird people who really don't give that much of a shit about Batman. I don't mm. know. To me, to me, it's just I really like this portrayal by by Rob Pattinson. Of yeah, Batman. I thought is it like more like is it is it kind of more like on like the like Joker side of like storytelling, no, or is no. it more like a Batman Begins? Type oh, oh well, I suppose if, if, if that's of... the the scale that we're going with, I guess yeah. it would lean more yeah. towards the Joker side. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't compare it to the Joker either. It's more like they clearly want to tell Batman as a, as a character through this kind of somewhat realistic lens of like, if mm. Batman was a real person, yeah, he would be a fucking weirdo. Like more like a human drama side of things. Well, it's yeah, it's a kind of detective movie, but also, you know, they don't shy away from showing Batman as being, having a lot of issues. Yeah. yeah. Like the man's got problems. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, and- um, More money, more problems. Yeah, dude. And uh, <laughs> I liked the villain. I thought it was pretty good. It's the Riddler this time. The Riddler, it? Yeah. Oh, it's Riddler. Oh shit. I thought they did a good, really, a really interesting take on the Riddler that I liked. Um, <laughs> I just had fun. Like I was, I was there for three hours, mm. maybe towards the end, I felt like I could have hurried up a little bit. Yeah. But overall I wasn't bored. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. I'm interested to see what Riddler is like in a, a movie of that caliber, right? Because to me, the Riddler is Jim Carrey. 
<laughs> it's it's so, literally the opposite. It is opposite. It's, okay, okay. It, yeah, I think you. I think you'd both like it if you watched it. I'm sure I would. Yeah, and uh, it's I a like great cinema experience. Like, okay, it was fucking. How, the, the thing that's always wanted me about the Riddler is how the fuck would that work in the age of Google? You know, like the Riddler <laughs> comes up with like a riddle or something, and Batman's like, "Hold on a second. Okay, I got the answer now. No, I Batman's got the answer." Like, Batman's like, "I think I saw that in the Buzzfeed article." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like the one, it's like the one YouTube short that he like watched the other day, <laughs> and he's just like, "I remember that one. Yeah. I know the answer to that oh, one." Fuck, I, I would, I would look it up. I was showing on TikTok, but it's, the algorithm's so shit. <laughs> The, the yeah. only issue with my with the movie is that I wish Robert Pattinson was just out of the costume more. He's just so yeah. good. Why? Does he does he do like the gravelly like I'm a man like? Oh yeah, voice? he does. Yeah. Oh okay. okay. He's pretty good at it. Oh, okay. He's yeah. he's just really good at doing voices in general. Actually, mm. he's just a good actor. He's a good actor, Fuck, yeah. right? Definitely. I watched I watched Good Time again after I was like, you gotta watch Good Time. It's so good. Mm. Please watch Good Time. It's so good. This episode is sponsored by Harry's. As you guys know from all the other Harry's ad reads we've done, I use Harry's. It's the only razor I use when I want to shave my face. It's the only razor I trust that actually does a clean shave even after the first few times you've used it, unlike the other razors that I've used in the past. So much so that when I went to the UK, I bought a suitcase full of Harry's back to Japan because you can't get it here. And new customers can redeem a Harry's trial set for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash trash taste. Mm. Harry's believes you shouldn't have to choose between a close, comfortable shave and a fair price. So they give you both. both? In, in fact, Harry's blades are designed to stay sharp longer. In a recent study, guys who shave four times a week said their eighth shave was as smooth as their first. What are you waiting for? Harry's is giving their best offers to you guys, the listeners and viewers of the show. New Harry's customers can redeem a starter set. You get a five blade razor, a weighted handle, foaming shave gel with alloy, and a travel cover to protect your blades when you're on the go. That's a $13 value for just $3. There's truly never been a better time to try Harry's, Garn. Go to harrys.com slash trash taste to try Harry's today. $3. Back to the episode. $3. $3. Back to the episode. Because I can't think of... Has there ever been a Batman that I thought was interesting? Because before the okay, I, I feel like before the Dark Knight Rises, Batman just had a like an had like an awful streak of just bad movies, and that mm. just made his. What's DC in general? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. True, you, know, you, true, don't like, true. you don't like the George Clooney Batman? Well, with the fucking bat credit card and the fucking bat nipples yeah, and all that fucking yeah, dude. shit. Even the best thing about that was fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> as uh, Mr. Freeze, nice right? Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel like for the longest time, Batman was just either a boring or comical character to me. And the most interesting characters were the villains of Batman. And yeah, yeah, yeah. the only time I thought Batman was an interesting character was actually during the animated series. Oh, yeah. Um, very, very good. Like that was like, that was, that was peak Batman for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you, have watching. you seen the animated series? Yeah, I love the animated how series. Do, how does this compare to like the animated series then? Because that to me, that that is good Batman. It's a different experience though entirely. I right. feel like it's hard to compare them both when they're both trying to do wildly different things. Mm. Right. I think, mm, but that's also so good because Mark Hamill is the Joker in that is amazing. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. so incredible. good. I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable comparing it almost. I feel like it's not it's a fair. Apples and oranges. It's not a fair it? fight. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should just watch it. You, you won't regret it. <laughs> Just watch Conclusion, it. Conclusion, watch it. <laughs> Genuinely, like it's definitely like- I no, definitely, I want this, to, I definitely this, want to. Yeah, this is just Connor talking about media in general. Yeah. Connor, 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 sell me on it. Uh, just watch it, innit? No, there's a lot of stuff it, I'll tell you not to watch. I don't think it's <laughs> worth your time. This, however, is worth your time. Did you uh, play the Batman Arkham games as well? I loved the Batman Arkham Asylum yeah. game, dude. I got a story-based game that, that was, you play? Well, it was hardly story. The, the combat was fun and punching and exploring was fun. <laughs> that's true, that's I true. don't know what the story was. I know Joker was-, was <laughs> <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. I thought we had one thing in common for once when- He's got goopy gamer brain. Dude. Yeah, goopy gamer brain. I liked it brain. and there was also like, the combat trials. That shit was fun as fuck. You did the combat trials? Because I was in like, I was like a, I was addicted to getting all the achievements. Oh, fuck. Wait, you did side stories? Well, no, so so <laughs> I, I was obsessed with gamer school. <laughs> that's the like, that's like the last thing I do. Like if, if a, I hate it when there is like a fucking, uh, when there's a point in the game where you can like do a trial for the combat or one of the game mechanics. I'm like, get this shit out of my face. I don't know. No, wanna... me too, me too. <laughs> yeah, okay. Unless there's achievements. <laughs> well. So, uh, Okay. So you're an achievement hunter? I was, I was an achievement right, hunter. Right. So here's what happened, right? Mm -hmm. um, when I first got my Xbox and I discovered these achievement things, I thought, oh, well, that's pretty That's pretty cool. That's a yeah. pretty cool thing to stride towards. Mm -hmm. And then my friend was uh, an achievement hunter. And I I was like, I want to be better than him at this. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, I'm, just, I'm gonna start doing it. And then yeah. I got kind of addicted to it. And I would like, I would research games that were easy to get all of the achievements on yeah. and then mm -hmm. buy them and 
and do them just to get the achievement score. Yeah. I had like 60,000 gamer score or something. You could only get about a thousand a game normally. Yeah. So, so I had, but you got DLC for some stuff as well. Mm. I, I bought Lost the game, like this TV show Lost, specifically because you could get all the achievements in like two hours. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know why. So I was, just I was, speed ran it? I was absolutely <laughs> addicted to getting these achievements and I, Arkham Asylum was one of them I got 100% on. And Damn. it was really hard because you had to do one of the trials and maintain a combo of like 100 or something. I can't remember what it was. But I remember it took had, a lot of You attempts. also had to like collect all like the- All the Riddler all, trophies. All the fucking Riddler trophies. Did all of that. And there was Jeez. also ah. like, you had to do all the stealth missions perfectly as well yeah. or something like that. I can't remember exactly. I remember it was really hard getting all the achievements, but that was such a good game. that I didn't mind doing it. Mm. When's the last time you did that then? Or achievement, you... achievement collected? Yeah, Not yeah. Since I was like oh, 18, 19. When I went to university and I had less time, kind of realized that like, wasn't that fun? <laughs> it's not fun at all. But, like, it's, I, it's not fun. I have, I, I had gotten one of the hardest achievements uh, on Xbox. Right. Ever, which is like um, staying alive on um, Dead Rising. For, oh, like, for seven days straight. Yeah. Yeah. You I did that. that? No, not that one. It was another Dead Rising one. Not the seven day one. What makes wait, it so hard? What's, wait, th that's on the first game, right? That's Dead Rising 1, yes. I've done all of them on Dead Rising 2. <laughs> oh shit. Which is, I think, no, they have like kill one million zombies or something right, stupid. Right, right, right. Sorry, not the three days one. My, my mom would have yeah, killed yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You had to be, that the, That one was, you had to be alive in like hardcore Dead for Rising like endless days. for uh, seven real days, like in the real world. How'd I did get that. What was the other you one? You have to go in shifts, surely, with yeah. people. Yeah. What was the one I did on? All of them on Dead Rising Two are really hard. I remember that took so long. And, That's um, just like a difficult game. Yeah, there's some games that you know. This I oh, maybe this is why I hate JRPGs. JRPGs always had the hardest achievements. Yep, they did. Hands down, yep. the yep. most, and they had the most cruelest ones where like get this item that if you miss it, you can't go back and get it. Fuck yeah. you. So yep. that's, I think that 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 is what genuinely stopped yeah. me from ever buying a JRPG <laughs> for a long time. Because like people have to be psychopaths. To, like, you do. You have to be JRPGs. Yeah, you do. Whereas like yeah. Cod, yeah. I'm looking at you, Joe. <laughs> well, to be fair, how many times did you have to like play Persona 5 before you 100% uh, like right? six times? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I also 100% at uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy VII Remake as well. Oh my God. Well, that one's not too bad, I guess. That's not too bad, yeah. Because I, I've, I feel like that's like a third of like the original game. Yeah, exactly, right? so, exactly. So, I wouldn't dare do it with the original. Oh no, 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 no. fuck that. Like they've, I, I feel like they've become a lot more accommodating in these modern times yeah. compared to like OG JRPG games where oh. they assume that that's the only game you're playing for the entire year. Yeah, they, they just assume that's the only game you have on that console. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just gonna last you the entire yeah, exactly. fucking time. Exactly. I'm trying to find my Xbox profile so oh I can God. see what I've done. I think it's, it's this one. Isn't the hardest uh, Xbox achievement the fucking Mega Man 9 one? What's that What's one? What's that one? It's the one where you have to beat the entire game without getting hit a single time. Which if Oh, so that's you, just a no hit run, but an actual achievement. Yeah, yeah, which if you've played any Mega Man game is practically no, quite impossible. Um, what's the game? Uh, one of the Tom Clancy games had an achievement for being the number one ranked player in the world. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> I remember. I, I remember. I think I saw like a Watch Mojo video a long time ago, which was like the top ten hardest Xbox. I was like top ten list of games I'm never going to buy, and yeah. one of them, one of them I already own, is like Gears of War. Yeah, so it was like you had to get uh, like a hundred thousand online kills. Yeah, in the first game, but like no one was playing the first game after like the third <laughs> one came out. How would that even be possible? I like, think how much you have to do a hundred thousand matches with your mates. Right, no, no, right, it's, right. it's kills, so you have to be averaging like fucking hundreds. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like, that yeah. is. And Gears of War is not an easy game to get kills in. Yeah. So it's it's very difficult. Um, I can find this. I can find it. Go. <laughs> All right, I've I've got the list of all of these. Some of these games are just fucking stupid. I yeah. said I have fifty one thousand gamer score okay. on Xbox, right? So um, that's like what fifty yeah. games, forty five games. I've every single COD game. I have every single achievement. Of every single you. every single Halo game. I have yeah. every single achievement except for the newer ones like uh, Halo Wars Two and um, yeah. Halo Halo Infinite. I have all of them. I had I did all of the. I don't know. Did you, did you ever do Halo? There was, the, there was those what challenges mean? where you had to like do certain things without dying, like the skull ones. Did all of those. I, I only uh, played Halo 1. I've only played Halo 1 and Halo 3. Mm. I didn't play Halo 2. I got every single achievement in Blue Dragon, which I remember Blue having- Blue Dragon? Yeah. The JRPG? Yeah. Oh shit. Um, yeah. I, got, I, I remember you were talking about Blue yeah, Dragon. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think um, 
What's this one? What's I have game, most rare. What's the rarest one? Head trauma. Uh, every that's, type of melee weapon on the zombie. <laughs> that's so weird. There's there's like that's rarity. Which is a lot in Dead Rising. Yeah, like everything right. is a weapon. <laughs> I've killed. Yeah, okay. Some of these are like really low. Uh, some funny games I've done. Doritos Crash Course Two. What? I've got all of the achievements on Doritos Crash Course. <laughs> why would that you is, buy that game? It's free. It's free. No, the other question is why is there two of them? Yeah, it was really popular. <laughs> I've got all the achievements on Red Dead. I think that wasn't too hard. Um, what else have I done? What weird games are these? So like, would you basically Batman do Arkham nothing? Asylum. Would you basically do nothing until you 100% of these games? Yeah, I've played- South Park games. I've played the South Park Tower Defense game, Lost. I have Terminator <laughs> Salvation, which I think I got because that was easy. Yeah. But then it turned out to be really fucking hard. Uh, what's weird? What other games do I have here? God, most of these are Cod and Assassin's Creed. Um, Happy Wars. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I didn't even do that one. That must have been too hard. Guaca, wait, hold on. What was the one after that? Guacamole Super Turbo Champion. Dude, that was edition. a good game, dude. That's a Guacamele. good game. Guacamole. <laughs> and then other games I couldn't do them all. There are quite yeah. a lot of games, actually. A lot of the Gears of Wars ones were just like fucked. Um, yeah. Forza, Destiny. Fuck, dude. I played some weird ass games. What's wrong with me? Well, I think as a kid, you just played any game that you could get your hands on. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. And now they're FIFA. like. FIFA, of course, of course. You have one fitness. On FIFA. I, I, I don't know why, FIFA 09. I got all the achievements on Halo Wars, which uh, one of them included getting to the highest rank, which takes like mm -hmm. an absurd amount of hours. Jeez. A, a stupid amount of hours. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, I've, 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 I, I, I don't think I've ever got addicted to a game that much that I wanted to 100% it. Um, no way. Because I, I think the closest I've come, actually, um, surprisingly, is Tales of Arise. Like, <laughs> which was which was last year. Oh, oh yeah. shit. It's the first time where I actually did the fishing mini game. Cause you know how every game has a fishing mini game. I was yeah. like, what what is the fuck who's fuck what fucking loser plays the fishing mini game? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is actually pretty fucking damn fun <laughs> collecting all the fish. Um but yeah, I mean recently I've been playing Horizon Forbidden West. I'm like the one fucking person because everyone's playing Elden Ring right now. Mm. And I'm like, I'll get to Elden Ring eventually after I finish Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's- Is it's, there a fishing mini game in that one as well? <laughs> I don't think there is. <laughs> I was like, I was You're like- You're like, God, I wish. Can you I'm, fish in Elden Ring? I think so. I'm, I don't know. It's, I, we're, we're not like Dark Souls or like Soulsborne. Um, I'd like to think there's fishing yeah. in, a, in an I mean, ideal like, world. I, 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 we, need, I, we need a Twitter account to be like, yes, you can fish in Elden Ring. <laughs> I feel like it's just every JRPG, right? That you can fish. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I don't know, I, I, I don't it's like a staple. I don't know how that, why did that become a trope? Why? Because, because <laughs> Japanese people love fishing. Yeah. Do they? Well, they love fish. <laughs> okay. They love eating fish. Yeah. That doesn't they necessarily- They don't like catching it though. Yeah. A nation of fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> by this, by the same logic, you know, us Brits should you love fishing because uh, we're 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 a fucking island nation as well, right? We're, yeah. sh we're shit. We don't eat fish. We're fucking idiots. <laughs> so, you got fish and chips. That's we, it. We eat cod. We okay. one fish and like salmon. If you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Why is that? Why is that? Not only why is there a fishing mini game in every JRPG, but why is it that 99% of them have no effect on the main story whatsoever? It'd be pretty shit if you're fighting Sephiroth and you're about to fight him and he's like, sorry, you haven't collected all of the 19 <laughs> different species of fish. You are not ready to face me. It's like, well, yeah, well, well I guess I guess that would be weird. <laughs> I think I, I, would, I want a JRPG where you're actually rewarded at the final boss. It'd be oh, like, no. the mom is like, you've, You've done the fishing mini game? How, ah! did, you, how did you know that sea bream scales are my weakness? Ah! You start with like half health. Oh, where's my health bar gone? Well, I know some people who are like deadly addicted to like every fishing mini game in JRPGs. I mean, Alan is that guy. Alan is that guy <laughs> who boots up Final Fantasy and then he spends like the first 10 hours on the mini fishing mini game. And then after he gets bored of that, then he actually goes play the game. Alan's, like, that, Alan's that guy who actually does the Mahjong mini game in Yakuza. <laughs> because let's be real, every Yakuza player is like, don't mess with us. We don't know how to play Mahjong because no one fucking does that mini game in the Yakuza games. <laughs> well, isn't like the mini games, the main game in Yakuza? Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, except right. the Mahjong mini game because no one knows how to fucking well, that's, play That it. is until you come along and play And then Yakuza, I'm like, Joey. let me show you. Let me show you how to do it. <laughs> yeah, how's your uh, Mahjong coming along, Joey? Have really you, good. My have, addiction is growing. You're speed running old yeah. Asian man. Yeah, I am. I am. I, I went to a Mahjong parlor for the first time the other day. 
Oh, um, in that? ABC, it's really fucking fun. I mean, like, you know, I think that the the general like stereotype of like a mahjong parlor is like it's fucking dark. It's you know, yeah. like smoke is everywhere. Like basically fucking Akagi, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like, I walk in and there's I've never seen that many lights on in one room. Like right. I came in, I was like, ah, oh, fuck! It's, like, it's so bright and like no one's smoking in there. Like a yeah. lot of really young people as well. Hmm. Like there was maybe like two tables that had you know, older gentlemen and everyone yeah. else was like around our age. Was it all men? No, surprisingly, oh. like half of them, I'd say like half, maybe 40% were, were ladies. Oh. There were like okay. a couple of tables where it was just four ladies just oh, like wow. sitting around. Right. Um, but yeah, I went in, uh, my, my, I went with like one of my childhood friends because uh, he's been getting into Mahjong as well. And he was like, oh, we're going to go to this one uh, in Ebisu. Yeah. And I was like, why this one in particular? And he's like, oh, the, the, uh, the fried rice here is fucking lit. And I was like, so are we going to go play Mahjong or are we going to go for the fried rice? Fried rice with the- Yeah, oh, wow. you can order food there. And dude, oh. to be honest, probably some of the best fried rice I've had wow. in Japan. Nice. While okay. playing Mahjong. Yeah. I believe it. It feels like the kind of place where you get <laughs> yeah. a weirdly good meal. Yeah. Well, I wonder where did Mahjong get this image of it being like a game for old guys or old people? Because well, it's always old people playing it on like the street, and, like betting mm. normally. Is it? I, I never see that. Like uh, normally, like my my entire my entire image of mahjong comes from media, basically. Because mm. I've before like before moving to Japan, I'd never, I guess I'd never seen right. anyone playing mahjong. I, I, I know you're getting this right. POV, you're watching a movie, right? It's a spy movie. Let's say a spy movie or any kind of movie. <laughs> they're undercover in uh, uh, Indonesia. Yeah. Let's say, yeah. oh, where, where, do, they, do, they, do they play Mahjong in Indonesia? Yeah, Southeast oh. Asia is pretty popular. Right, so they're playing Mahjong, uh, you know, let's say they're in, in Indonesia on a mission. Yeah. Oh no, their cover's been blown. We've got to start running through buildings. Yeah. Charging the one building. Oh, it's a it's a, it's a a food store, chicken everywhere. Run in the <laughs> next room. Oh God, it's a bunch of old people playing Mahjong. <laughs> You've seen this scene like 500 yeah, times. every yeah. time. Like, because they, they, it's always just old people in a smoky room playing Mahjong. Every Jackie when they, Chan When they like bust through the thing and they're like, yeah. they keep running through. It's always that, always. And then they always do some kind of corny yeah. work. Well, know, yeah. Right as they're running out yeah. of the room. Well, yeah. it's, it's either that or it's like an old like kung indistinct fu. Asian shouting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always like an old kung fu movie. Yeah, yeah. and you, you get into like bad guy's lair. Yeah, what's he doing? He's sitting down playing mahjong yeah. with his fellow with his guys asserting dominance. Right, those that's the, that's like the image I have of mahjong. Yeah, like in that that dark smoky room mm. and everything like that. Well, it's like, I feel like it's like the poker of Japan or like poker of Asia really. It's yeah, like, definitely. It's like yeah. the kind of game where gambling's not legal. But yeah. me and the boys can have a little wager or two, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Under, the, under the table, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> like, so, yeah. yeah, have you guys ever played bridge before? Uh, no, I'm not 19. Yeah, I, no, no, exactly. That's I've that, heard of that game. What is that? that? That's that's a game which I don't know. It's like what a card game? It's it, 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 it is. <laughs> would have gone off now. <laughs> <laughs> it is a card game. Um, I don't know what the image is. I don't know if it's like famous outside of the UK or mm. anything like that. Oh yeah, it's famous in the US. And, and again, for being the thing that people play in retirement Old people homes. play it, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And like, I remember, I think it was in like high school or something. Um, one of our teachers for like, uh, for like, this uh for like you know you know you have a free period sometimes and it's the end of term mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you like right. uh so this teacher decided to teach us bridge mm. um just teach us the rules and i got like i got like addicted at a point where i'd like joined the bridge club yes i like, i oh, was shit. i was that kid who actually joined the bridge club because like it, it had this image of like mahjong being what old retired people play in retirement homes mm. but like it is fun as fuck right yeah. like it's it's kind of similar to mahjong in a sense where you get given a bunch of you know it, it, it is it is kind of like poker where it is luck based but it's also skill skill based but yeah. what i found most interesting to bridge is that it's it's a team game right so yeah. the basic concept is before each game you have a partner who sits like opposite you right mm. and you basically have to make a bet on how many how many points you'd be able to get in the hand you're about to play. Mm. So you're like kind of communicating with your partner and communicating and trying to like assess what everyone what everyone has mm. uh, by the bets that they're placing. And I thought that was like, 
I, I think that's like super genius. It's basically like Uno, but before the Uno game starts, you have to try and guess what everyone else has. You're right. working in a team. Cool. And uh, yeah, like, I, it, like to me, I wanted to talk about it because like Bridge has this image of being a boring game that old people play, but mm. I think it's like interesting as fuck. And I haven't played Bridge since I was in school yeah. uh, when I was in Bridge Club. But yeah, I got I got super addicted for a while because I, I think it's a genuinely fun game. Well, and I, yeah, it's the same with Mahjong, right? It was like, I, I, you know, before I started playing it, I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna get into this. Like this is, yeah. this is what my grandma was into. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, right? But then when you actually start playing it, you realize just how like intricate it is. And it's not just like a fucking, you know. Well, I don't think it was an old people thing. I think it was like a really complicated thing. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting though, how even, something like Mahjong, which is a very complicated, like yeah. deep, you know, and very like, you know, mind intensive game yeah. is associated with old people. Yeah, when, yeah. If you look at like the pro scene, for example, like most people are like dudes and chicks well, in yeah, 20s. I mean, of yeah, course, yeah. Of course. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like chess in the parks in New York. It's yeah. Like, yeah, all the old dudes are, are playing it, yeah. but yeah. it's the young people who are it's the best. A, it's a world. PR thing, right? When, yeah. when are we going to get like, you know, a Twitch category? Everything, everything's a branding issue with yeah, you, isn't yeah. it? Because I, I, well, I, I, I can't be fixed with a bit of branding and PR. Yeah, remember like like literally just two years ago where chess had the same thing and then suddenly chess had a fucking second renaissance uh, with the explosion it's had on Twitch. And now mm. it's seen as like this cool thing. That, Mahjong's uh, next. Mahjong's I'm next. I'm going to call it, Mahjong is next. You know, you know what I want to learn? The VTubers are already on yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know? That, that's the secret. We need to get the VTubers to all start yeah. playing the it. Japanese, <laughs> the Japanese VTubers have been on that shit for so long. Yeah, right? Yeah. I think, yeah, weirdly, chess is one of those sports where when you look at it on paper, it just shouldn't be a spectator sport. Mm. Yeah. Like everything about it makes it almost a bad spectator sport. Mm. There's yeah. long gaps in between moves. Yeah. It's not that uh, engaging. Yeah. Storylines are a little harder to, to you know, yeah. get across. Mm -hmm. And it's visually not that exciting. It's mm. uh, you look at a board for like 15 minutes at a time. If you're lucky, they'll make a move every 15 minutes yeah. in the world championship. But somehow I think just out of pure, like being a very solid and ubiquitous game, it's managed to somehow carve a good niche and a pretty strong one. Mm. Yeah. But also chess has also had great success by having the branding of being the smart man's game. Well, the smartest of smarts play yeah. chess. Well, gentlemen, I, th I, th know? I think the problem with chess as a spectator sport is that um, with a lot of sports, right? You you look at the higher level players. Mm. Uh, you look at you know like you know traditional sports like football, basketball, maybe even like league or whatever, and you can like. You can even, even as a normal person, you can appreciate the skill being shown. Mm -hmm. You see someone doing a speed run of Mario 64 or something, you're like, damn, those are some- No words needed. Yeah, yeah. no words yeah. needed. That's fucking speaks for itself. But like me watching a high level chess game, like the chess world championships is like, I've never understood the feeling of that side character in Dragon Ball Z, where like the characters- that explains the moves. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, where, where, like, where like the main characters are following the fight perfectly and yeah. you just see like, you just see nothing. Yeah. Like they, that, this is me watching high level chess, you know? Well, yeah, that's why I think chess has gotten really good re in recent uh, years at having the, the kind of what a lot of esports are doing and what traditional sports are doing for a long time, where one yeah. of them is the one that's saying what's going on. Mm, yeah. And one of them's helping add color and break it down and yeah. really like explain it. And chess has been really good at that recently. Cause yeah. I mean, I, I like watching the world championships, but even then there are periods when nothing happens for 20 minutes. Mm, and yeah. it's like, I got, <laughs> I got shit to do, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I get like, I, I, I get um, recommended like a clip of Magnus Carlsen streaming or something like that, and it's just like an out of context clip of like this fucking 500 IQ move, and then the move happens, and I don't even know it's happened. Yeah. Because it was like five moves ago that he reacted to it, and like he. And like, I remember, I think one of the funniest videos I've seen is just like, a, like I can't remember the exact video, but it's a, it's a, it's a parody video of someone commentating on a Magnus Carlsen stream. Mm. And it's just like a normal person commenting on his stream. And it's just like, and Magnus Carlsen leaves his knight hanging. Is he gonna take it? Is the opponent gonna, gonna take it? No, he doesn't take it. He doesn't take the free knight. Oh, now he's left his queen hanging. Is, the, is he gonna take the queen? Magnus, the queen is right there. No, he doesn't take the queen. <laughs> and uh, and he looks like he's in an awful position right now. And he resigns, Magnus Carlsen <laughs> resigns. I don't know what's going on. And it's just, it's it's it's, it's, it's exactly how I feel watching, yeah, yeah, yeah. watching a high level chess game when I'm just like, 
there is a hanging queen right there. Why is Magnus Carlsen not taking the hanging? Oh, and he just resigned for no reason. Um, yeah. And he scrolls to the comments section and it's never the top comment that's explaining what's happening. It's always like buried a few <laughs> comments down. Just be like, I can someone just explain to me what I, yeah, what yeah. I just yeah. witnessed, please. Um, but yeah, I mean like that's why one, one game I really want to get into it sounds super interesting. It, it always looks super interesting to me, um, but I'm fucking terrified of possibly getting into is Go. Go seems mm. to me like that is just like, chess is complicated by itself. Go to me, even just, even just the concept of Go, it seems like what like viewing a bottomless pit that you cannot see like, that you cannot yeah. see the end of. My, my granddad was into Go and he was like really good at it. And he tried to teach me when I was in high school and I was yeah. like, I don't know what the fuck is <laughs> happening. Here. I know you're like, I know you're showing me the ropes like really nicely and kindly, yeah. but like, I'm, I, all I'm thinking is, ooh, black and white stones. <laughs> yeah, all I know is that Google documentary yeah. about the AI they built to beat the best player. Yeah. And then I read Hikaru no Go and I was like, I understand what's happening. No, I, I, I like, because I also read Hikaru no Go as well. I read all of it. Yeah. And I remember there was a point where they tried to explain what was going on to the viewer. And I think halfway through the manga, they just stopped. Yeah. They, they, they just stopped showing the matches, right? And they just like, uh, I'm not even gonna try and explain it. The, yeah. This guy wins. And you see it like, it's a manga that that just, it bases its hype on of people off of like character reactions, yeah. as opposed to what's going on in the match. And it's not very good, is it? <laughs> I think it's because they just assume you're like, you're, you're, you're 15, you're 15 yeah, you got it. Like yeah. you're 15 <laughs> volumes in, you should know how this works by now. Like we're not gonna explain it to you. Like I still don't think I understand how football works. And I watched all of- um, What do you mean football? Sorry, American football. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, okay. football. Um, I don't know how football works. And I watched, I read all of I Shield 21. I think I understand how it works. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that's like very, you know, like realistic. Like you're not gonna be like, you're not gonna be watching the Super Bowl and being like, well, how, he could have done a devil back ghost there. Why didn't yeah. he? But you know, when you're like watching something, you're like, I feel like I should understand how this base game works. Yeah, I don't. Baseball is another one that I've watched stuff about. And I'm like, I think I understand the baseball, but I'm not mm. so sure. Really? Baseball's fairly easy to figure out. I, I, I don't understand when they swap that much, but then again, I've never watched three strikes, right? Three strikes, right? And they swap teams? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you get three goes and then everyone, no, cause then they all, everyone on the field swaps? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's not three, not three like throws, right? It's just no, it's no, three, three strikes. Right, 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 right. So when you so when right, you right, throw right. in baseball, you can I, it, it can either be a strike or a right. ball. Yeah, right. and and you have a you have a strike zone. Yeah, that you had that pitchers have to throw into. Yeah, if, yeah I know yeah. that. I know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So when it's three strikes and That's one th then they're attempt, out, one and bat, when it's right. three outs, they switch. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there are usually nine innings. Really, like, never even when I read stuff about it, my baseball just doesn't look fun. Am I bad? Am I wrong? No, baseball's hella fun, dude. Really? Yeah, I love watching I mean, baseball. there's a lot of sports that are, are fun to play, but not fun to watch. I feel like it would be fun to play. Yeah. But not to, fun to To me, watch. that's baseball, that's golf, mm. that's cricket. Sorry, Indians. Um, <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> like I have, fun, I have fun playing them, but watching them, I kind of fall asleep. I mean, I, I think kind of, same with American football as well. Cause uh, I, th I think my problem with a lot of American sports growing up with, you know, with someone who watched, you know, f uh, you know, real football um, and <laughs> a lot of Europeans. Yes, I fucking Whoa. said it. Yes, I fucking said it. It's, it's the amount of starting and stopping and the um, advertisements that go in between. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I don't really like about the NFL or not, oh, uh, the American football is like, yeah, it's just way too many starts and stops. Yeah. And I'm just like, at, like right as like when a play is happening and you're like, oh shit, here we go. Oh, they stop. I, yeah. I don't understand. I, this is again, for someone who is, I, I again, I, I think I understand how American football works. I don't, I'm not sure entirely. Which <laughs> you think you understand how it works? I think I understand the rules, right? Okay. But even when I'm, I'm watching it, my, my, my older brother really likes American football, but I'm just thinking like, why would I ever want to watch this over rugby? Yeah, I'd much rather watch just, the rugby. There's no point where I've ever watched a like American football game and thought, fuck, I wish this was rugby. Like, I, th I think- Sorry, there's no point that I haven't thought that. Every yeah. single time I watch American football, I'm like, I just wish this was rugby. I, I, th I think just because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be the American here. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be the American. Stick yeah, tell stick me why. Because I don't sticking know, up, I don't know. Sticking up for American football. Um, Because I think, um, even though I just complained about the stop start, I think 
the beauty of American football is that it comes in bursts, right? And when when that burst happens, mm. I don't think there's another sport that could really compete with American football with just the amount of Hype. the amount of small things happening in sh such a short period of time. Because yeah. there are so many things going on when when they're in when it's in play, Australian football would like to have a word with okay, you. Okay, I haven't watched Australian <laughs> football, Joey. Okay, that's our footy. <laughs> okay, Joey. Okay, Joey. <laughs> but but to me, that that is that is the real strength of American football. Mm. Uh, but it's like, super intricate, especially when you know yeah. you ha when you have an idea of like, yeah. oh, that's this plan. They're doing yeah. all these different that's pieces. Cool. Like, yeah. That's fun to watch, but it's like it happens. So quickly. It happens so quickly. Yeah. And then by the time you're like, oh, that was kind of cool. Then they're stopped. Yeah. But also that's why I love basketball. Basketball is so fun to watch. Yeah, mm. Basketball is really fun. Basketball is hella fun. Dude. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's sports that, you know, have a constant movement going on. Yeah, right? like, yeah, that's why rugby is so fun because it's yeah. like, it's uh, except if it's like a penalty or whatever, it's just yeah. like constantly moving. You know? Yeah, like to, to me, like I, this is this is a preference. Like I, as a spectator sport, I do like when the, when the rules are, how can, how can I, how can I word this like fluid? You know, mm. there's like the offense and defense can change at any time. If if there's if there's a sport the, where you know you, you have an offensive team and a defensive team, and then they swap at certain intervals, like American football, like um, baseball. baseball, cricket, or whatever, then that's like I, I I like it when anything can happen. When there's more randomness of like mm. you know someone your Mario Party. Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically. <laughs> what are the items? Uh, <laughs> banana, put some banana peels on the baseball field. Yeah. And then, and then I'll watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean like every sport has- You should play the Mario baseball game. Yeah, You'd yeah. love that game. Did they bring out new Mario soccer? Yeah, so, they are. Is there a Mario baseball game? Yeah, on yeah. GameCube. Super Mario Strikers. No, Strikers is the What's soccer. That's a, that's a football game. Yeah, Sorry. Sluggers is sluggers. the baseball Oh, sluggers. Oh sluggers. my God, dude, that's a blast in the past, bro. I, I tried to get that game for Christmas for so goddamn long. Yeah. My mm -hmm. parents had to like buy it off some shady Chinese website and it turned up and my parents and I also was too young. I didn't know about region lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and with my mom, bless her, she like tried so goddamn hard to get a copy of this game, but they just never sold it in I, I found Sluggers the other day actually at uh, in Ark Harbor and I mm. bought it and I played it for the first time since like, I was like 12 and I yeah. was like, this game's godlike. Like um. <laughs> easily the best Mario sports game. No, Strikers was really good. Strikers is good, but Strikers was I just, so good. I'm just, I'm more of a fan a new of, one. but I'm more a fan of baseball than foot, than soccer, so. No, no, f football. You're right. You're right the first time, Joey. No, you're so right that's soccer. It's you're, soccer. Right, you're right the first time. It's soccer. It's soccer. You were right the first time, no, Joey. It's soccer. Oh I refuse God. to call soccer football. Oh God. But anyway, that's been this episode of Trash Taste. Uh, we did talk about a wide run a bunch of things today. Very yeah. random episode. Yeah, very, very random episode. From wildlife to uh, sad boys to uh, back to video games, right? <laughs> God, I want to eat a fucking tortoise so bad, dude. God, I wish Bruh. I could have tried that tortoise, man. I bet it's What so is it good. with you and extinct food? Oh, just, like, it's first it's the I'm, extinct I, If banana. I was born in like the British Empire, I would have been the one guy that were like, fuck, don't let him on the fucking boat, dude. <laughs> He's just gonna stop bringing on weird fucking animals to eat. <laughs> the reason why it hasn't had a genome now is because of Connor Coon. <laughs> do, do you know, I, do, I, 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 dude, I would, I would have been like, sorry, scientists, man. It's, <laughs> it, you got to try it. Oh wait, you can't. Okay. I ate it all. <laughs> okay, here, here's the thing. Like, you know, since we're past the era of discovery, where you know, new are you math, adding in another topic before we end this? I, I, I guess so. I guess yeah, so. Now, on, now that you mentioned, on, now, since we're past the era of discovery, um, I'm jealous of not the people who were the first to like discover this new land, but mm. imagine like discovering a new animal and being the first person to ever taste it. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, pe like pe the people who taste it of your type of people. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, if you're like, you know, in Australia, I'm sure like Aborigine people had eaten a bunch of the stuff that was yeah, of there. Course. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but yeah, I guess you, you would be the first <laughs> foreigner to try it. Yeah, 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 I guess. It. I guess. I, I, I think to me that's way more exciting than discovering think new landmass. Think about land all the mass. foods that might have tasted good, but the first guy who had it thought it tasted bad, so he never. We never yeah, but it. but it's also like there's like a terrifying element to it, right? Because right. you don't like. Could you imagine the first person who drank like cow's milk? Yeah, like that would have been fucking terrifying. Being it would like, have been terrifying. We're just really weird. Yeah, it's like it's like oh, this <laughs> weird white shit just came out from the tit of a cow. Yeah, I'm a drink it. You know, it's like I respect it. I respect yeah. it. I like, respect it. Big balls, big no, balls. If you probably saw the little cow drinking. You thought, oh yeah. Man. It's like oh, if he's, he's I can't like that. Yeah. yeah. 
Anyway, that's oh, been, that's been uh, trash taste. That's been trash taste. You know Joey. who likes milk? Our patrons. Oh my they love milk. And probably giant was, tortoises too. I was too, thinking the entire time, like, how the fuck am I going to segue into the patrons? Milk. <laughs> this guy you like milk, right? Giant tortoise, right? Yeah. I thought I thought you said something completely different. Wait, what? I thought you said, you know who we love to milk? <laughs> <laughs> Our patrons. Oh, damn wow, God. God. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Trash Taste. Hey, if See you, you guys. Hey, if you want to be milked, then uh, make sure to go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash oh <laughs> Also, follow us on Twitter, send us news on the subreddit, and if you hate our face, listen to us on Spotify. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that's been Trash Taste. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.